a very good morning to all of you and a happy independence day thank you so much for joining us on this uh, event and just just as always uh, we have kept everyone on mute uh, this this is going to be at least 2 2 and a half hour or maybe 3 hour webinar we make it as as much interactive as possible so please chip in your question on the chat box and from time to time we'll we'll take a break and ask more questions so for example if dhruv speaks for say a half an hour and then we'll take uh, more questions right and with this uh, i'll just start today's uh, presentation i hope you can see my screen and the the presentation which i'm sharing right so once again uh, happy independence day to all of you before beginning i think uh, it makes sense to 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 give a tribute to mr rakesh junjunwala who has been by far the most influential investor in the indian stock market community right so there has been a lot of news uh, there have been so many things said about uh, rakesh junjunwala on the media on or on social media so i'm not going to take too much time here it's just that uh, one thing or the biggest thing which we think we can learn from him is that even having so much of experience in the market even after making so much money in the market even having so many multi baggers in his portfolio he always respects the market and that is where i believe many of us falter after making some money after getting a few multi baggers after doing something good in our portfolio or in our investing the first thing which comes to our uh, which hits us is our ego we consider ourselves far better than others and that is where uh, we falter so that is our biggest learning from the big bull is that there are no kings in the market market is the king by by understanding this particular line you will always be a learner and try to understand where you are going wrong rather than trying to prove that you are the big, best investor or something like that right uh, before moving ahead we had uh, a competition uh, which was uh, 15 days back uh, we invited some entries for smart sync services research report writing contest and we received some really good entries from young and passionate investors so uh we thought that this is a good opportunity to reward them so earlier we thought of uh putting a prize like uh, prize like uh, so first prize would be a one month paid internship at smart sync services second prize would be exclusive membership in our mission smile offering and third prize would be an investment related book however uh, most of the entries were so good and we ended up finding three entries which were really good so we didn't want to rank them as first second third so we thought that all three uh, are actually the winners that doesn't mean that the other people who have written and put in the hard work they are not winners it's just that we had to pick up uh, three names and these three people's uh, work were probably the best so we asked all of them if you uh, so pick your prize yourself uh, among the three so we are happy to know that all three of them actually have gone for internship at smart sync services so congratulations i'm i'm going to uh, declare the name just now but before declaring the name there is a surprise uh, which is all these three interns will get an exclusive one year membership of mission smile from our smart sync services offering so a big round of applause to the winners uh, in alphabetic order gaurav mohata sahil barodia and snake agrana i hope they are here i'll just stop sharing here uh, gaurav are you there if you can raise your hand oh great so gaurav i am unmuting you it would be great uh, just 
in maybe 30 seconds if you can just share your experience that would be great hello yes, sir. go ahead uh, very good morning sir and everyone well uh, it's a pleasure that uh, i have been uh, like my research report has been selected because earlier i had participated in uh, many of the like research con uh, contest and it's a pleasure to be selected uh, like my research report is being uh, accepted by you sir so this gives me some kind of confidence because i have been investing but uh, like initially you always look forward to someone from whom you can uh, take guidance from or uh, take acceptance from that uh, your thought process is basically right if you are thinking so so this gives me some kind of confidence and faith that okay i can improve here upon so yeah it's a pleasure thank you Varun. uh sahil are you there can you just raise your hand so that i can unmute you sahil yeah okay Sahil, I've unmuted you. Okay. Sahil? No problem. Okay. So I think we can move on now. So these three uh, young and passionate investors are our uh, winners today. And not just internship, we have also given them uh, a free membership of our Mission Smile offering, right? I hope you can see the slide, right? Right? Let me just present it in the, yeah, got it. So before I uh, before we begin, one last thing which I wanted to mention is this: we have not shared about this uh, outside this meeting at all. SmartSync Services has this Mission Smile offering since more than one and a half years now, and till now we have covered a lot of deep dives into different companies from different industries. So we have already covered 17 webinars. We have 15 detailed research reports. We have had five guest webinars, four triple S key partshala where we discuss about investing concepts with examples and three investing karva as in what is investing karva where we get stalwarts who have at least 20 years of experience in the market. So just to give you an idea, Professor Sanjay Bakshi and Vishal Khandelwal were our first two guests uh, on Investing Karva. Next Sunday, we are having our fourth Investing Karva, Mr. Gaurav Sood, who again is someone who has a very good understanding of not only long-term investing, but also a uh, special situation. And you would be surprised to know that he is using value investing principles to also do option trading. So that is again going to be a very, very, very interesting uh, session next Sunday. Only for this webinar participants, this 20% discount is available. I'll just uh, share it. The I'll just share the link of the. Just a second. I'll just share the link of the. This thing so that you can. Have a look. And. Let me just take this. After the webinar, this uh, discount will cease to be there. So you only have the time till the webinar is in uh, place, right? So I hope you can you can see the link which I've shared, right? With all this out of the way, now let's come to the presentation. Right. 
Yes. So today is our 18th Mission Smile webinar. And this webinar, we are going to do a deep dive on three auto ancillaries. And through the, with the help of this webinar, what we are going to do, we are, try, we are trying to answer these three questions. Number one is, why these three companies in the auto sector look interesting to us today? What are the risks to all those uh, businesses today? And we have also tried to, uh, we, our team recently uh, read the book, Diamonds in the Dust, where at the end of the book, there is a very good detailed checklist, investment checklist has been, perform, uh, has been shared by the Marcellus team. So we thought that uh, it would be great to use that checklist for these three companies, which probably many of you would uh, appreciate and like. However, there is one surprise which I uh, shared at the beginning that people uh, might be getting bored by seeing me all the time uh, presenting on ideas. So today we have uh, Dhruv Bajaj, who is one of the youngest member of our research team. He's only 19 years old and he's been preparing for his CA inter exams. And even though I am the face, uh, of all the Mission Smile webinars, in fact, uh, my research team doesn't get that that much credit. So I thought that maybe from this uh, webinar onwards, we will have a few changes there. So and Dhruv has worked really, really hard. I can uh, vouch for that because when you will go through the slides, you will understand how much hard work has been put in. So Dhruv, I'll stop here, and I think it's all yours. Uh, before that, I think I can just run the disclosure uh, as we are a SEBI registered investment or, uh, advisory firm. I think uh, disclosure are very important. Uh, neither me nor my company nor my clients have any stake in any of these three companies. This is just uh, an, an educational uh, content. We do not want to uh, recommend any buy and sell through this. And with this group, over to you. I think I'll stop sharing and you can uh, start sharing uh, from your uh, system, right? Over to you, Dhu. Yeah, no. Yeah, I've, I've made you the presenter, so you can now present. Yeah. So good evening, everyone. Really excited to uh, present in front of you all. So we'll just quickly start presenting. Let's start it. Yeah. So we all know about these businesses. We also discovered some of them through FinTwit. So it will be really interesting to first know what these companies are, how we are going to go through this entire uh, presentation. So basically what we have tried to do is not just show you what these companies do, but also show our thought process, how we got to know about these businesses and what is our view at the end. So uh, these three companies are Team Industries, Lumix Auto and HGS Enterprise. So we want to explain you through three mental models, how we discovered these companies and why we like them. So first, cloning. So if anyone has read here, Dhando Investor, so Manish Pabrai there advocates that we should do intelligent cloning, wherein if a good investor, like say Warren Buffett, invests in some stock, then it might have some merit. So it doesn't mean that you should just randomly clone all his stock stock picks, but Rather, pick those stocks and start your own research to know that why is he finding that stocks interesting. So through that mental model, we got to know about theme industries where a news came that Samit Vartak of Sage One's investment, who is one of the most prolific mid cap investor in India, has invested a decent stake in theme industries. So with that, I would like to start now the detailed research work on that. Theme industries. It's a basically two wheeler lighting specialist 
who has been uh, present in India since last 30 years. If we see its glo global presence, so primarily majority of revenues, like close to 90% revenues come from India. But the clients that they cater use its Indian facility to export it to other countries as well. So although the Indian portion might look a little higher, say 90%, but actually they're exporting to other countries also via the subsidiaries. So they have probably 12 to 12 plants. And an interesting thing to know about this company is that what we use in lighting business is something called SMT lines, which is basically if suppose a company has SMT line and it is into lighting space, then one knows that it is backward integrated. So it was the pioneer in SMT line businesses since it brought that line for the first time in India and later other invest, uh, competitors also brought that, but it was a pioneer in that technology. So with that, we will like to talk about three business segments. So it's three business segment are primarily automotive lighting, rear view mirrors and plastic molded parts. But one would have to intelligently know that how much these uh, segments are contributing towards the revenue and what are the margin profile and how is the ma management's expectations towards this business going forward. So I would like to cover each segment in depth. So the first segment, so before that, we would like to talk about the two wheeler automated lighting business. First, what these products are sell. So basically they sell two to three types of product that is halogen lighting, LED lighting, and many more. So the key competition here is that although they are the industry leader, but there is no pricing power in this industry, right? So basically the relationship that they have with OMF is one of the key factor behind them gaining market share or increasing their order book along with obviously the uh, product business, which allows them to deepen their wallet chain of the customer. And one of the strengths, as I have previously highlighted also that they have six to eight SMT lines and no one in India has that because of which they get some cost advantage and they are fully backward integrated. And also as we will cover further, one of the biggest strength of this business or any auto ancillary that we are covering today is that they have very decent R and D works. So what this helps is if they are able to churn out new and new products for their clients, so that will ensure that they have some sort of stickability and there would be low net, there would be high barriers for a new company to enter the space as well as high switching cost. So what is switching cost? Suppose I am a businessman and I am having a relation with my another client for more than 10 to 15 years and I'm continually giving them new products doing research for them for new products, then why would they leave me? And if I'm able to offer them competitive rates, then it is highly unlikely that they will leave me for some other person, even though they might undercut myself because I am providing them additional value in the form of R and D. So with that, I would like to talk about the market, uh, what should I say segment mix. So basically automated lighting contributes close to 70% of its total revenue. And an interesting thing to know is that management is guiding for increase in this segment. So why, how can one increase the segment, although they have three segments. So I will talk about this further. Second segment. Wait a second. Yeah. So first I, so as you can see, they have so many products in lighting space. And one interesting thing to know is that they are continuously adding market leader players in this segment. So like recently they added Hero Honda in their profile before they added like three to four years back, they added Yamaha and they have scaled that business very well. So one interesting thing to know about this business is that if they added new client, then due to the process that they have in selecting their uh, auto ancillaries, it is but sure that they will maintain this relationship for a little long. Like these are not short term contracts due to the relationship structure that they have. So like recently they got uh, Hero Honda, which is one of the biggest uh, OEMs in India. And secondly, one interesting thing to know is that they also got an exclusive order from Ola for their electric vehicles. Although that business might not have scaled a lot as we have hoped for, but since every new OEM like Ola, Ether and all these electric vehicles are choosing theme as their preferred supplier. So this must speak volumes about their research and development also. 
because every new company would want that their supplier might provide them with additional value additions because they don't have a lot of experience in this industry, right? So because of that, this makes them apart from their competitors. Second segment is review miners. So in review mirror, basically they have six state of the art manufacturing facility, which again lend them some cost advantage. And one of the interesting features of this red view mirror and the next. So we would like to have this uh, Q and A after 30 minutes. So if I present say at least half of my, the company's presentation, then we can have that Q and A. So like I was saying, among these three segments, the primary segment is lighting segment and other two segments are used to cross sell the products. So if we can see review mirrors is second segment. And if when we see plastic molded parts, so it is basically a feeder to rear view mirrors and automated lighting business. So they also sell this product as a traded commodity to its uh, OEMs and other players, but primarily it's used in house and that put integration in its business. So if we will see the EBITDA margins for all the business are similar at roughly around 12 to 13 percent. The management says that this is because their relationship is such that margins offered on all these products is similar range. But a word of caution here would be that basically there are three segments, but the company is primarily focused on its first business that is automotive lighting business. And it expects that these two business will be stable and not contribute a lot to the top line. So with that being said, they are trying to do JVs with several other globally established player for entry into new segments. Like recently they came into a JV for bank angle sensor and sheet metal parts. And both have an opportunity size of roughly 50 to 60 crores. They previously also have another JV with ASIN for canister segment. That was a JV with ASIN and Toyota. But that venture didn't turn out to be as fruitful as they thought. And so they sold their stake to generate funds for their EV opportunity, which I will like to talk in the strengths part. Now coming to strengths. Like before that, does anyone have any questions regarding their business segments? We can take that, I think. So, uh, Dhruv, I think uh, Manan has one question. Lumex is now more focused on fast cars, passenger cars. Uh, so, FM would also benefit from diversification from two-wheeler to four-wheeler? Great question, great question. So, what this is that this, we can get some opportunity from four-wheeler segment. Since their uh, existing capacity doesn't differentiate between two wheeler and four wheeler, but what they say is that to end to get an entry into four wheeler segment, they need to have JVs with strong players. So they think that currently for next two, three years, at least two wheeler segment will be the major contributor of the revenue. And later on, they expect if they get some decent JVs then they can get entry into four wheeler segment because already all the established players have their strong relationship with other auto NCLs like Lumax industries itself through that JV's network also. So it will be difficult for them to get entry into that four wheeler segment. But like I said, yeah, yeah, we will have that segment where we have breakup for the venues. So yeah, what yeah. I'm trying to say is for four wheeler segment, it's quite difficult for them to get entry and they are primarily focused on two wheeler as it is. Right. So, uh, I think, uh, Avdut has raised uh, his hand. Avdut, I've unmuted you. You can ask your question. Hello, uh, good morning, nice, uh, good going, and all the best for, for your future slides also, uh, for the slides also. The three questions. First, what's their capacity utilization? Yeah, I will come with to that later on. But okay. look, yeah. currently it's close to 70% if I'm not wrong. And they don't okay. plan to increase and their considering... capacity. Yeah, yeah sorry. Uh, so no CapEx plans going further. No, so what they're saying that they're if their EV scale, EV business scales up, so they already have an additional land where they can increase their current capacity by at least 25%. So that is more than suffice for at least next two to three years. And then later on, they can think for further capex. So there is one slide where we will explain that they have been investing heavily since FY17-18, even though the auto cycle was in a slowdown. So because of that, they have enough capacity to currently service their requirements. Uh, uh, I think I, other questions I can come back in the queue after once you finish. Just one about industry structure. Uh, if you can elaborate how many players, whether it is oligopoly or uh, how uh, that market is. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So basically, it is one of the leading players where they have close to 30% market share, right? 
and what they say is that the key competitors are basically Binda Corp and Numex. So these three primarily contribute to the revenue, and it is not a very unorganized segment types of business because they directly contribute to their OEMs, right? So when I will come to Lumis Industries, there we can talk more about the industry sector because it has several parts like aftermarket and all. These are um, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Understood. No issues. Uh, okay. Please go ahead. I will come back in the queue for the question. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Abdul Bhai. Uh, so, uh, Dhruv, there are a few questions on the chat as well. So, Siddharth is asking what is the market size in lighting segments and how market share, how much market share PM have and what they are targeting. Yeah, sure. So, they don't give any particular guidance regarding the market size. So, what basically they are trying is to just add new products and get deeper wallet share of their existing product uh, companies and they are able to do that. What they're guiding is to grow at least for 15 to 20% for the next few years. And in the recent con call, they even gave guidance for 25%. But at, we at SSS like to not go directly through that guidance because they will obviously give some bullish guidance only. So, but there is enough room for market side, uh, market growth. And one key thing that is developing here is that there is one shift going on from halogen based lighting to LED based lighting. So what? This shift is that I have covered that distance as well. So, but I can give you a brief on here. So LED based lightings have much higher revenue realization compared to their halogen base. So because of that, their overall revenue pie will increase and for the, with the, with the introduction of EVs. So basically LED lighting require less energy as compared to halogen based lighting. So naturally all the electric vehicles will require um, LED lighting and since these are uh, team is one of the leading players in LED lighting due to their uh, SMT lines and all and low cost advantage. So they are going to benefit directly from that. So as the EV, so we, I, I'm not commenting on market size because if EV grows disproportionately than uh, traditional OEMs, then the market size might change a lot. So it is not prudent to comment on that. Rather, what I can say is that all the major OEM players are now having a good relation with EV, they didn't have any business from hero before. So now they've got that also, and they are getting share from EV players also. So as they scale up, there will be more clarity regarding their market size is what I believe. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Dhruv, and there is another question from uh, Vishant who is asking about what is the breakup of OEM versus replacement for PM. So for theme replacement market doesn't contribute that much. It would be close to three to 4%. And there is a reason. So what they believe is that because their products have very long life cycle and they have certain contracts with OEMs, wherein they can't sell, they can't sell, sell these products that are already selling to OEMs directly into aftermarket. So that restricts that aftermarket business growth. They are pretty bullish about this segment, but we don't see any particular spurts in this, that business currently, if you ask us. Right. And uh, then we have a question from Piyush who is asking business with hero is not yet started. And I guess they have got approval for three products. Any idea yeah, from sure. when yeah, sales will that. be started? They might guide for Q4 FI 23, I guess, but more importantly than where the sales will start is that they have at least got some supplier uh, who has well, uh, some OEM that has national presence before they had all the key customers like hero. They can't go to Bajaj because Lumos already has very deep relationship with them. So one major OEM that was left in that pie was Hero. And since now they have got that revenue pie, Malab, they have at least gotten that customers so they can prove their word by increasing their uh, pie in their total space. So if when we'll see the Yamaha, what gives us uh, confidence in this business is because they got Yamaha business in 2016-17 if I'm not wrong. And they have scaled that business so much that currently it contributes close to 19% of the total revenue. So from that, we can get an idea if we, if they get one good OEM player, then they can scale that business rapidly that we have seen not in just Yamaha, but also in, uh, uh, what should I say? Honda motorcycles, Iker, many more. So basically if they get one good uh, OEM, then they can scale that business. So that gives one optionality already. They are growing their existing customers, but. That gives us an optionality. If this business also grows up, then that can contribute to the revenue pile. Yeah. So I think, uh, Dhruv, you can uh, move ahead. We'll Sorry. we have all the questions uh, in the chat box. We'll take up maybe in the next sec uh, section. 
Sure, sure. Yeah. So now I would like to talk about the strengths. Yeah, so first strong customers, as I just well, said about that, they have very good relations with all the key OEMs like Yamaha, Hero Honda, Royal Enfield, and many more like Ola Electric, all the new EV players are also having good relation with him. And currently if we see that Yamaha business is scaled up from negligible to more than 90% of their total revenue pile. So what this means is they are able to provide additional values to their uh, customers to their R and D facility. They're able to, they are very cost competitive due to their six to eight SMT lines and their several facilities. And this gives us com uh, confidence that if they get one good OEM, then they can scale this business. So if we will see the last five years performance, they have comfortably outperformed the industry growth rate. And there is a reason for that. It is not just because of their good product profile, their good management, but also because of the Yamaha business. Because if you will see that Honda business, which is one of the biggest player in India, that has been very stagnant for the last five years. So the majority of the revenue growth has come from this Yamaha business. And so because of that, if we believe that if they can get a substantial pie from uh, Hero, then that can in, uh, easily increase the revenues for the next four or five years. So that is one of the key point here. We can see, so that uh, breakup that we wanted now, replacement markets contribute negligible, like close to 3% of the total business. And it is not expected that it will grow very rapidly here, here on also as well, because as I've said, they have certain contracts with their OEMs wherein they can sell the same products in the aftermarket. So that one restrictions hampers their aftermarket growth. So I've already explained all this. So yeah. One sec. Yeah. So second is strong R and D department and backward integration. So also if I have also given a brief overview. So basically because they have six to eight SMT lines and they were one of the first companies to bring these lines in India. And it is a big thing. We will get to know more about this line in Lumux Auto as well. So because of that, they it provides them a good backward integrated structure. So wherein they can not only provide goods at cheaper rate, but also provide additional value additions. So what they have done is they have created JVs with companies from Japan and Italy. So that allows them to develop new products and new types of products to their customers. So like as I talked about Yamaha's segment, they introduced a new lighting that was one of the most smallest as well as most powerful lighting that they claim to have. So they extensively promoted that lighting. So because of, so what I'm just trying to say is because of these new product categories, they are able to penetrate deeper into new, new customers as well. Although Yamaha might have some other suppliers before, but because of these value additions, they were able to get deeper wallet share of their customers. So the MD said very nicely, that basically they are an R&D company as well. So the time from where they stop doing R&D, their business is bust because they need to constantly provide addition, uh, value additions to their customers. So if I can just read it briefly. So basically the development of lamp is very, very imperative. And if you don't have the R&D in-house, then you can't compete in the market. So this is one of the essentials. And I would not say that it is one of the major co competitive advantage, but also it is one of the essentials of this business. So all their uh, competitors are also doing the same thing. It's just that they are able to do more effectively than competitors because of the, which they are able to get better wallet share of the customers. So if we are surviving since so long in a company, basically R and D is playing a big role. This is an extract from the Concord. So third point, tailwinds in EV and their focus in LEDs. So as I saw, uh, talked about, so basically last year news came about Ola that they are going to get entry into this electric vehicle space and they are planning to have a capacity of close to 3 million vehicles per year. So when they um, said that FEM is our exclusive supplier for lighting, so that short of FEM's price because people were very bullish about this place. And if we have followed this story, then that story has not played out yet because Ola's certain we, we don't want to talk about its product quality and all, but basically that business has not grown yet. But what one can expect is that since all seats it provide very new value additions to its product line and its customers. So it's natural that if any new startup comes in this EV space, so its preferred supply would be firm. 
right? And one other important thing is that what I've talked about before as well. So LED lighting is having higher revenue realizations and they have less energy requirements. And they are also more aesthetically pleasing. So theme is theme, Lumis and all other lighting companies are expecting that there would be a value migration from normal halogen based lighting to LED lighting. So now this migration should have happened at least one to two years back, but due to COVID and the light, prices of light, LED lighting being higher, coupled with BS6 norms, wherein the prices of the vehicles increased exponentially. So because of that, they believe that the value migration has been a little slow till now, but they expect this to face up in the coming years. And because of that, although the margin profile will be similar in both LED as well as halogen based uh, lighting, but since the revenue realization from LED based is much higher. So that will ultimately increase their asset turnovers, which will aid their return ratios. And fourth is supreme track record. So basically for past 10 years, the auto industry has not performed really well, but if one will look its performance then one will not get any picture of that. If one sees this presentation, although it's a, it is two years back slide, but it is still re relevant even now. One can see that for the past 10 years, it has comfortably outperformed the auto industry. So, as I said, there is some level of cyclicality in this business because at the end of the day, it is serving OEM segment, auto segment, but it has been able to comfortably outperform the segment. So, that gives us confidence that if in case this cycle it revolves around to a positive, yeah, even mean, then the business will benefit a lot from that. So yeah, a picture speaks a thousand words as far as my concern. So the next part is management. Now we would like to cover about the management. So basically it is a promoter led structure wherein DK John and his son is leading the business and their wives, sisters and all are involved in the business. So they have 55% stake in the business. So that ensures. So we at SSS like that if a promoter has anything greater than 50% that, that ensures that they have skin in the game and they will have to think about their shareholders. Otherwise their share prices will collapse obviously. So having skin in the game is one of the key things that we look for in a management and they have experience for more than three decades in this business. So as I've said, it is JK, Jain, Sigma Jain and all it's all their family members are involved in this business. And since their uh, children are also involved in this business, so that gives us confidence that there is some level of succession planning in this business. So again, key metrics. So I think we can, yeah, we can have some questions now. If we want, yeah, fair, I should cover the financials first and then have questions. I think, uh, Dhruv, you can probably finish uh, sure. PM and then we can take up all the questions. Sure, right? sure. Yeah, that would be good. So now we will come to financial. So now I talked about the positives, but how can we know for sure that these are the positives? So I think the financials will speak for itself. So basically to just the management's competence, because we should also understand the capital allocation skills. So what they've done in the past. So what we have tried to do is break up capital allocation into three parts. First would be their JB's MA and all such thing. Second would be the diversification into different product lines. And third would be what is the dividend payout policy. So on the basis of that, if we judge them, so capital allocation has been a mixed bag is what I believe because what they did is that during F5, 15, 16, there was a craze that LED lighting, not LED lighting as in OEMs, wala, but normal LED lighting that we use in our daily life, consumer durable. Wala. So in that segment, it was suggested that there would be exponential growth in the segment. And since they were already manufacturing lighting. So they thought that it is within their competence to develop this lighting and similar the case with Lumens as well that we will cover later on. So they ventured into this space and in, in, initially they also got massive orders from uh, government entities like double ESL and all such things. But when the cycle turned and because of predatory pricing tactics of other competitors, because people got carried away that, oh, there is so much growth in this segment, so that, let's get entry. But that space got so much crowded that the realization start uh, dropping down a lot. So because of that, they had to, and also there was one account receivable problem, wherein the, even the government entity 
was unable to pay them. So there is still some outstanding debt of close to 20 to 25 crores from WSL. So because of all such problems that they were facing in that business, they decided that we want to discontinue this business. But since they had already spent three to four years in this business, so that felt that it is not even needed to sell this segment separately because they that existing facility could be used for their lighting business. So currently that gave a big drag to their ROC profile. So if we will look there, their ROC was close to 15% from FY16 to FY1819 in spite of poor performance from the segment. So what they did is that they just ran that operation enough to cover the de depreciation expenses. So that was showing loss in the books, but that was no cash loss in this business. So now with that being said, the drag from that uh, segment has perished from management's perspective and now they believe is that ROC should trend upwards. So that is one of the key positives that we can take on that they ventured into some different segment and I would consider this as a red flag because if one would do research about the segment, so all the major lighting businesses were venturing into this place because one, it was being heavily backed by government also. Like there were several missions to uh, increase their transition from normal lighting to LED based lighting because it is very energy, uh, energy efficient and it doesn't cost a lot in comparison to normal lights as well. So in long term, it's better for the environment and all such things. So government was backing this and it was within their competence. So they thought why not? But one thing that I believed is that although that they might obviously want to say that it was the right decision from their part and that risk didn't play out. But how would they have distributed this segment is something that even a retail investor would think because it is although manufacturing is one thing, but distributing is it is a other big task that they had in their hands. And I don't think they were capable of doing that. But with that being said, that is a past. It has been five years since that incident. So that one venture was not successful. So then they did a JV with Asen and Toyota for a uh, canister and where they had 26% stake for 26 crores. So they were targeting a revenue of 150 to 200 crores from that uh, product segment, but that also didn't play out well. So frustrated from the segment and seeing revenue opportunities from EV space, they sold that stake there as well. So as to generate pipeline for future pipeline of funds for future expansion in their EV segment. And currently if we see there is no major drag other than that coming from any business segment and the dividend payout policy has been reasonable from 25 to 30%. And that is also major, majorly because of the slow growth of two wheeler segment. Like, so they didn't incur any major capex for the last five years. So because of that, they could also provide dividend payout policy. So before present, uh, preparing the presentation, we had one major antithesis regarding this business that there are lack of investment opportunities because they haven't done any major capex in the last five years. So like I would like to substantiate on that through financials. One second. If we see the financials, yeah. so revenue have basically uh, grown by 50% for the last five years. So that is pretty decent considering the state of uh, this OEM business and the income has grown rapidly because of the energy uh, cost efficiency, then margins and expanded from roughly around 10 10% to 12.3% like in the last quarter. And they believe that they can clock even 13% margins, but to be little sustainable, we expect that they can at least maintain 12% margins. Like they have shown that in the past. And if we see the capex, so that is what I'm talking about. The capex has reduced drastically and they have not incurred any major capex in the last five years. But if we see they started incurring capex during FY17-18 from where the auto cycle started depleting. So they haven't incurred any major capex for the last five years. And the JVs have also not 55 there. So one will get an idea that they don't have any enough capacity. Yeah, fair. They are, they don't have any reinvestment opportunities in this business, right? But due to this EV space, this problem is perishing because they are getting new orders from EVs like uh, Ola, Aether and all such things. So we now believe that if this EV cycle plays out well, then they will have several reinvestment opportunities. And they are even accumulating funds for that by selling their non performing stakes, right? And if we see their balance sheet, the gross debt is negligible. So that gives us a confidence that even though the cycle was in downturn, they've at least deleveraged their balance sheet. 
And if we see the ROC and ROE profile, like even after the drag of that LED luminaries business and all such thing, the ROC have been pretty decent, like above cost of capital. So that is one primary thing that we look for. Anything above 12 to 15 percent is decent according to our eyes. The key thing is if they can sustain those ROC numbers. And we currently believe that because of the shift to EV lightings, LED lightings, it is sustainable and it might even increase due to lack of any drag from that LED luminaries business. And if you see the working capital cycle has been pretty reasonable even in the last five years also. And dividend has constantly increased as I last year talked about. So yeah, so key takeaways are working capital days have stabilized. ROC is much better than uh, ROC is much better than cost of capital. So one interesting thing that we other than this look for is something called compounding multiple. So I would like to give a brief about this. So basically, Bharat Shah in his book Value Creation and Wealth Something, he I am not remembering the name correctly, but he said that if a stock is able to grow at a much faster rate than is profit kegar, then that should that should give you some idea that market has strong perception about the stock. Ma market might believe that there is some stock growth potential in future or the management's past track records warrants that the stock should command higher valuations. So if we see in Fiem's case, the profit has grown at close to 16% for the last five years, while the stock has or for the last 10 years and stock has grown by 26%. So that lends us the confidence that they have proven performance for the last 10 years. And if the quarter cycle revives, then they must be one of the biggest beneficiaries out of that. And there is negligible debt as I've talked about that balance sheet is quite strong. One sec. So we have talked all positive. So what are the antithesis? So basically they have unable to scale up their replacement or aftermarket segment that I've talked about previously as well because of their relations with OEMs in the high life cycle of the business. But still we believe that if they are such a big player, then they should have some presence from in aftermarket space. And we will cover in depth about what is this aftermarket segment and why it is important for any auto ancillary in Lumos Auto. And they don't have any pricing power. So in one of the con calls, one analyst asked that uh, play other players are trying to get deeper wallet share into their existing customers like Honda and all such things. So don't we have any pricing power? So management said that in short term, the competitors can cost up, can do predatory pricing tactics and get a better market uh, wallet share out of their existing customer. But in the long term, they can't continue that trend also. So also there is no pricing power, but the management believes that the structure is such that there won't be any predatory pricing power, major predatory pricing power tactics that anyone use. And there is very high dependence on two wheelers. So like someone asked, what is the breakup of PV and uh, two wheelers? So the passenger vehicle segment or even commercial vehicle doesn't contribute a lot to their uh, earning profile. So primarily they are a two wheeler automotive lighting company. That is what they have said from the start. And although if they get opportunities through JV, they would like to enter that because their existing capacities are very fungible. So like they don't dis differentiate between LED or halogen, two wheeler or four wheeler. So they can cater any type of demand. But the key thing is to get a proper entry because the, uh, the industry scenario in this case is such that if an OEM is having 10 to 15 years worth of relations with any auto insulator, then it won't leave them just for better cost competitiveness. If you have existing business, then yeah, you can get a deeper wallet share because of your cost competitiveness, but you would just get a business simply because of that cost competitiveness due to their existing relationships. And there is one key uncertainty about how the EV themes play out. So like I would want to substantiate it later here. So when the Ola opportunity came, so analysts were very upbeat that there is a opportunity size of 3 million vehicles produced per annum through that just Ola plant. So they were asking that why are you not doing major capex and also they mentioned that they already have some land and they can increase their capacity by 25% easily. And if they want, they can increase the capacity a lot by and they can increase this 25% capacity within three to six months. So that won't be a problem. But they are cautious about the fact that what if this EV theme doesn't play out? So they have that, they've had that experience now in that LED luminary space, wherein there was projections of very high growth, but due to very 
competitive industry structure, they had to leave the scenario, that space. So they are very cautious about how these EV themes play out. So yeah, that can also alter their um, guidance for coming years. So that is one key risk that we have to see because they have good wallet share in their existing customers. And although they are ensuring that they, they get higher penetration, but still this is one risk that we, not one risk, but one key thing to track when if you are invested or looking to invest in this company, whether the EV themes play out or not, because if that does, then Lumis or what should I rather say, theme would be one of the key beneficiaries from that. So yeah, with that, my presentation of theme is complete. We can have questions now. Yes. Yeah, thanks, uh, Dhruv. I, I, before I take the questions, I'm just thinking at, at the age of 19, I was uh, studying in my college. <laughs> I had no idea about stock market at that point of time. So it's really great to see uh, you doing well. You. Uh, I'll just uh, unmute Vishant because Vishant has actually asked some really good question. So probably uh, Vishant, if you can, I want, I've sent you a request. You can unmute yourself and ask those one by one. Yeah, Dhruv, uh, it's, it's a really nice presentation. And Ankit rightly said that at the age of 19, nobody may be aware about stock market except the pricing rather than the fundamentals. So it's been really nice. The first Thank question you. was with respect to the the uh, ju just give me one minute. There is a nuisance out there. Yeah, that's right. So let me shift to a silent room. So uh, the the question is uh, any any particular content any particular uh, 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 number with respect to the R and D which they are spending on a continuous basis uh, and how they are account for it. So they don't account anything. As such, because what they're doing is that they have JVs with this R and D companies like Ituroon and one more company in Japan. So they don't spend a lot, like close to 10 to 15 crores they might be spending per annum, but they don't spend a lot on the R and D as such, but rather their existing facilities are doing really well. And one of the key reasons is not just because of the spending that they are doing, but it's also, as you all know, that Japan is much ahead in the, uh, what should I say? advancement in technology as compared to India. So because they have ventures in those companies, they can get better technology advancement. And because of that reason also they, and also in general, FEM is one company that has been very cautious about this technology advancement. So that they were one of the first companies to bring SMT line into India, where LED, even LED lighting was unknown in India. During that time, they brought this SMT line. So they have been very cautious about that, but I don't have the exact figures. I can get back to you after this presentation. If okay. And uh, uh, one more question was with uh, with respect to the, the this uh, this let's say there is a I'm not sure about this particular business, but is there any uh, any any uh, any guidance from the management regarding that any capex which we require let's say EV theme which EV theme which plays out or uh, they 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 have to spend certain amount just to be in the market. Yeah, sure. Is there any guidance? So currently, they because mentioned? their current capacity utilization are close to only 70%. So what they're saying that we can easily cater to this EV demand and they don't give any particular capacity utilization data as such because their capacity is very fungible, right? So they can produce LED lighting as well as halogen based lighting and all such components in the same facility. So because okay. that they say that, 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 that answers my question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But, that answers my question, but to yeah. answer your question a little better, they are in what the last one called, they said that they have the additional land and they can easily uh, build their ca uh, capacity in or increase their capacity by 25% easily in three to six months. So that if in case the EV thing plays out faster than they expected, then even in that case, they won't lose any orders or stay, uh, have to lose any market share. If and any guidance in terms of the hurdle rate, which when, when they plan for a capacity, any hurdle rate, which they, they uh, have not, they actually they have not incurred any major capex in the last five years. So that question hasn't arrived yet. Okay. Thanks. But they basically look for at least ROC of 15% in their in internal business. What they have said. One five. Yeah. One five, 15%. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Vishant, uh, for your questions. So I'll move on to next questions, uh, Bru. Now, so uh, Piyush asks why they have a low market share in aftermarket sales. Yeah, as that is a very high margin product. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, aftermarket segment is no joke. Right? You have to do a lot of capex just to get a good distribution network. 
so it is an extremely difficult business to scale first of all and secondly the products that they supply to oems they have certain contracts with them wherein they can't supply the same into aftermarket because due to their r and d and also structure they also command a better margin as well is what we believe because of that because of the r and d structure and all but that means that they have to exclusively supply those components to the oems only so they have certain uh, relationships with oems like that and also what they believe which we don't believe as such but what they say is that because of the high life of their products the replacement ki need nahi aati is what they said because although we don't believe that but that is one reason that they have given they expect that this segment will grow but they are not giving any numbers and currently it contributes only 2 to 3% of the revenue so if that answers the i think information about aftermarket you will get a little better after the lumix presentation because that we have covered in intensively about what is this aftermarket because several people might not know what is this aftermarket segment and why we are try, uh, saying that it is a very negative thing or all such things so i think better idea will we will get after this lumix thing uh, so next question is from manan he is asked that uh, the recent lumix uh, con call it was stated that there is some stress in the two wheeler segment and hence lumix is diversifying so does this impact fm as its uh, products are uh, uh, primarily to two wheeler market that might so basically impact. the question is more towards what is your view on uh, fm concentrating only on the two wheeler market yeah so they are trying to diversify into canister uh, they try diversifying into canister that currently they are diversified into two bank tanker singles sensors and also products so they are trying to diversify but what they have experienced in the past that in the led luminary segment when they tried to diversify outside the lighting business that was not very fruitful for business like so there are several strategies that one management can think of they can either diversify a lot or they can think that okay we will do razor sharp focus on this existing segment only so because of their past experience also they are more focused on this and absolutely that will if there is some slowdown in that business so that will impact their business no questions on that front but because of this ev team play out even if there is no growth in this segment but if ev teams play out and if it gets a substantial pie from that also then due to the value migration from halogen based lamps to led based the revenue will increase also the vol although the volumes might not increase that much yeah uh, so drup uh, i don't know whether the management has uh, shared this but piyush asks uh, what is the size of harley davidson business for them no so do you have they have not mentioned anything as such sure so i'll move on to the next question uh mihir asked this question <coughs> what is the what is the profit margin in led lighting versus halogen light yeah so as i said the margins between led lighting and halogen based lighting are same because their contracts with oems are structured in such that all the products that they give the margins would be similar only but the key thing to notice that the, since the realizations in the led based is almost 2 to 2.5x the halogen based lighting lamps so even if the re mar revenue increase and the margins remain constant their profits the end profits will increase and their asset turnovers will increase so that will ultimately contribute to their top line as well as bottom line and their return metrics will look improved it will also lead to a higher roe like yeah this. exactly the roes will increase so i think may your second question is also getting answered uh, in this and if one will if one will think cautiously that if there is one capacity where currently they can generate close to 1700 revenue from halogen based lamps i am giving an example suppose this halogen based is replaced from led lighting which have utilization close to 2.5x so they can get 3000 worth cro crores worth of revenue from the same facility where they were previously getting only 1500 crores so why to increase the margins if you can directly contribute the to the bottom line is what i am trying to say yeah i see avdut raising his hand so avdut i am unmuting you please go ahead avdut uh dhru about that uh, halogen versus uh, uh, other uh, uh, lighting space uh, how the uh, two wheeler segment is uh, or the oems are opting for it the new vehicles which are coming out are they coming out with this uh, new lighting and what's the opportunity or uh, go going further or right right so the currently the mix between led and non led uh, led and halogen mid lighting in 
theme is close to 70 to 30. That is 30% is coming from LED and 70% is coming from uh, halogen based lighting. So what they're targeting is at least 50, 50 mix. So now all the new vehicles that they're coming that are coming with LED lighting only. So they were expecting this to happen since the past two years also. But due to COVID, the pockets were deeply hurt of consumers, right? So they, the vehicle manufacturers like uh, Honda, they thought that if we bring an Activa with LED, already the BS6 norms, they were saying the prices increase like close to 8,000 rupees per vehicle. And if they try to offer additional uh, lightings like LED, so that will increase the cost of vehicles further. So because of that, that shift towards LED was what as per management believes is delayed a little due to COVID. But now since there are no any major threats of COVID and the cycle is reviving, so all the new OEMs like even EV are using LED. And there is a one major reason. It is not just that it is energy efficient and not, but it also is aesthetically more pleasing. It is better for the environment and it is energy efficient, as I just said. So because of all such things, the shift has to happen because it is a much better technology. And in the long run, the life of e uh, LED is much longer than, uh, what should I say, halogen-based light lamps. So the shift has to happen, but it's just about time that when the cycle will revive, so the customers must be willing also not to spend that much because already the pockets have heard and they can't increase the prices or uh, work towards premiumization of their existing vehicles. So because of that, the transition has slowed down a little, but the management expects that this should increase from now onwards. And uh, we we can track this in a way that their uh, LED lighting segment volume going up. That's the only way we can track it. How no, is actually, even in all call calls, there is one key question that what is a mix? So they give information about their mix between LED and non-LED mix in the call calls itself. So we and can track easily from that. That is one key variable that one should track about this business. I have to say also. Yeah, and, sorry. Uh, uh, how we can track it on the OEM side of that OEM is completely going for uh, halo, uh, instead of halogen segment, they are now going for the uh, LED segment and major OEM if shifts from that, how we can track that part anyway. We can... So basically, I think con calls would be the best, best source here as well. So basically, whenever there is what I've observed is someone asks a question or they directly explain about this mix. So obviously they would question either why is the mix happening, shift happening or not happening. So they always mention some reason that either the shift, they said in last two years, the shift was slowed down due to COVID. So I don't have any particular source from where that you can access that. So I think we will have to rely on management commentary. Okay, I will check, check into details. Okay, no sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. So Dhruv, what uh, Avdut is saying is that, see management keeps on uh, giving their commentary, but mm -hmm. outside the management commentary from where can we uh, get this thing. I think of the uh, I can is the presentation. Ma, I guess if we can, uh, since all the major players are listed also, so I think they will mention about this LED space. But again, kitna contribution are uska exact ka? I don't have so, any. Uh, for OEMs, it's not their core product, so I don't think I I, I may be wrong, uh, but I don't think OEMs will mention this kind of transitions. But uh, okay, not a problem. I will hey, check. They say LED is one of a. Uh, Premiumization trend na. so they can they will mention ki hamare jo products are abhi new vehicles abhi LED based are lighting are so it is yeah. one of the edge for even two wheeler jo OEMs hai unke liye bhi ek, ek tarah ka edge hoga na because ye premium segment product hoga ek tarah se unke liye so okay. what I'm trying to say they will say ki hamare LED based lightings wale jo products hai unka sale badh raha hai I'm guessing also I have not delved deeper into this fact. I will, that was a nice question. I will try to look for that answer. So two, two triggers in a way, one is uh, two wheeler market uh, volumes increasing. That's one. And second is this product mix change from halogen to LED. These are the two triggers you are looking forward. Yes, yes, absolutely. And that EV thing, your bus, yeah, the two wheeler market, right. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. Abdul. Those were some really good questions. So moving on, uh, I think uh, there is. There are a few more questions. Uh, so, uh, I think Dr. Prasanna uh, is asking about some termination of JVs in the past. So, would that be called a red flag according to you? No, that is not a red flag because it is quite common for all the auto ancillaries. They go into one new product segment, they think that the revenue will fructify into 150, 200 dollars. And when that doesn't play out, they have to sell their share, otherwise, their funds will be stuck there. 
and if they are seeing growth in their existing business, provided they are seeing growth in their existing business, then it is prudent to sell that stake rather than just waiting for that thing to happen. Because if they are investing in their existing business, then they have more power towards their funds. Na? So that is not a major red flag, but that is very common about this industry, is what I'm trying to say. So as we can see in Lumos also, that shift has happened a lot. Wherein they sell their stake in JVs. That's fine. So next question is from Anand. What is backward integration this company has? Also, what is special about the six to eight uh, SMT lines it has? Yeah. So basically, the cost of SMT lines is very hefty, and it is one of the most advanced technology that you need to manufacture LED lighting. So even the competitor like Lumux have that have those one now. And they have this technology since last 10 years. And they brought introduced this technology or brought this technology in India when there was no clue about what is LED. So because of that, they had that first mover advantage. And here, one of the key things that I've been talking about a lot is that relationships with OEM. So how can they get better relationships with OEM? By value addition. And how did they get this or they provide this value addition? Because they were able to invest early into these new technologies. And because of that, they got entry into these OEMs and now they are able to supply them at cost competitive rates because they have this SMT lines in house. So if you, if one will read about Lumos industries, like before FI 19, I guess they were sourcing this SMT line from their other group company, Lumos Autotech. So they didn't have any, this technology their own and because, so I got to know more about this backward integration also by reading about Lumos. So where they mentioned that it asset was transferred from Lumos Autotech to Lumos Industries because they wanted to increase their backward integration. So that SMT line was one of the key things. So I think that should answer the question. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Manan has a new question. So yeah. Lumos will also be focusing on this EV theme as per the detail shared in Concall. So it will be one of the biggest competitor for FM2 for EV market share. Yeah, yeah, sure. That must play out, but currently the thing is, um, Lumux, uh, sorry, FEM is much ahead than uh, Lumux in terms of getting new customers in EV space recently. Like any, they are, any market share, any market share guidance given by the management? Actually, the market share, market size in itself is very, uh, what should I say? Not very robust at such even now. So okay. that is changing rapidly. Like last year, we were talking to Ola ki vehicles are going to be production in every year. And now people are thinking, what is the manufacturing capacity when it's selling? So now this scenario will play out in a lot of time. Exactly, we can't bet on this theme to play out. What I'm trying to say is that if this does, their already existing business will grow because they will be revived by auto cycle. But if their EV theme will play out, then already because they give value addition. So that's why the new EV companies are coming. Suppose I started my business, like I'm Ola, and I need a different type of lighting. So, no other player can make a specific light for me, but the female is doing that. So, that is one of the major reasons why we will go to female versus other companies. And yeah, Lumux might also be providing that facility, but it will be more expensive. Yeah, that's true. 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 Yeah, that's Everyone are talking about EV theme to play out. So they have to say that our EV may growth will come. So I don't know if you are talking about Lumos Industries or Lumos Autotech. So I've read about Lumos Autotech. I've not read Lumos Industries. So I, it would be wrong of me to comment about that business. But Lumos Autotech may at least four to five years back they were saying that Lum, ये कुछ EV theme play out ही नहीं होगा. बहुत time लेगा. 2030 तक play out होगा. And अभी ये theme अभी सब इतनी बात कर रहे कि EV theme play out होगा. So the shift had taken very drastically than what the OEM auto installers were even thinking. So, I think that the management of this commentary is better than the order wins, deal wins, and the other thing is better. Because they can't guess what the business will grow or business will grow. The business opportunity will grow in the next 5-10 years. So, their guidance will grow in the next 5-10 years. So, their guidance will be very sensible to rely on them. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. I think we can uh, proceed now. We'll take up uh, more questions uh, later on. Sure, yeah. sure. Please go ahead, bro. Yeah. 
just a second. Just a second, I'm coming, just a second. Yeah. So now first we covered theme industries and more importantly, we covered what is intelligent cloning that Monish Pobre talks about. So now we will delve into second business model or what should I say mental model. So that is excelling is something that your competitor fails to do. So like we talked about in depth that team is unable to scale up their aftermarket business. So there is one company named Lumax Autotech, wherein one I didn't know about this company at all. So in while studying the con call, one analyst asked that why are you not able to scale up this business where the competitor like Lumax Autotech has close to 20% share of replacement market in the total revenue file. So I was like, how can one company say that this is very difficult business to scale? Whereas another company is saying that we have 20% share from this business. And we know that aftermarket business is very difficult to scale up, which we will talk about detail later. So because of that, we got to know about this company, Lumos Autotech, and then we started researching. So yeah, Lumos Autotech, it is also primarily into lighting space, but other than lighting space, it is also into several other components also that we will talk about. So Fiend was primarily a lighting company. It is not only a lighting company. And a word of caution, this is not Lumos Industries of Saurabh Mukherjee. This is Lumos Autotech Limited. That is another company of the same group, Lumax group. So with that in mind, we can start the presentation. So yeah, we will get confusion ki Lumax Industries kya hai, Lumax Autotech kya hai. So I would like to tell you ek toh do companies hai kya aur inka differentiation hua kaise. So basically Lumax Industries were primarily into lighting business to OEMs. So what they observed is one of the key customers that is Bajaj. Want or Lumos industry is a JV with some uh, Stanley corporation of Korea. So they have 35% uh, 35% contribution and total contribution is close to 70% of promoting that business. So basically what happened is the Bajaj tha, they wanted ki they have some Indian supplier rather than having some company jinkai, koi bhaati company ka JV hai. They had, they must have had their reasons. So Lumox group had an option either to let go of this business entirely. You have to create a separate entity, primarily focus on catering Bajaj business. So that led to the inception of Lumos Autotech. So this was a business created, but now there was a problem. But okay, we Bajaj business to cater kar lege, but our additional growth kaise aega? So what they did is Lumos Industries from primarily focus on lighting and baki jo business ho gaye, say plastic model ho gaye, gear shifters ho gaye, and jo bhi emissions ho gaye, aur bahut sare business hain ki, wo sab hum ek alag Business banage, Lumos Auto. Uske drum of Baki is a business of Keta Karege or Lighting Mekhalik Bajajko or Ekamara Honda ka business ko, Activa is a port. Unko Keta Karege. So that marked the inception of Lumos Auto Tech. And currently, I'm going to the Donoka market size, revenue size sub same as Donoka Mika. So that business is scaled up very fast. Lumos Auto Tech is what I'm talking about. So with that in mind, now if we see the corporate structure, so they can have confusion over. So I would like to substantiate on that. So inki basically strategy hai ki hamara jo Bajaj ka business hai, wo hum aaram se khud settle kar sakte hain. Hamara jo Honda ka lighting wala business hai, wo hum aaram se hum kar sakte hain. Aur ek aur problem is cheez mein ye bhi thi ki Lumax se jo humne abhi dekha film industries mein aisa tha ki unke contracts aise the ki wo log same jo product agar OEMs ko de rahe hain, wo after market mein sell nahi kar sakte. To Lumax industries ne ye cheez realize kari. To humne separate entity isliye bhi create kari ki ye Aftermarket business ko cater kar paaye, because Lumos industry mein wo cater nahi kar paaye the due to restrictions from OEMs. So, isliye Lumos order dek apna aftermarket business scale kar paaye, because usse usse opportunity nahi na wo baaki sab companies ko offer hi nahi kar sakte ki baaki sab companies ko Lumos industries kar offer. So, is wajah se inka aftermarket business kafi acha contribution dete hain. Hum aage baat karenge. So, basically inka corporate structure abhi aisa hai Lumos order dek ka ki jo primarily inka jo lighting business hai wo khud se offer mila cater kar rahe hain. But they knew that we can't do lighting business ke growth nahi kar sakte, because we are restricted. So we are restricted that we can't grow in the rest of the business, that Lumax Industries will do it. So they had to delve into new business opportunities through entering into new product segments. So what they decided is, if we set up this setup, it will be very difficult. So what we should do is set up JBs with other companies. 
so they have started a trend 2007 ke time se ki they will set up jvs with other companies to get an entry into different segments so one will see then they set up one jv with cornelia in 2007 for emission system and air intake system so in the currently business urea tanks ka business hai so jiska abhi growth badhega due to bs6 norms so hum aage baat karenge fir ne glumex metallics ke baad matlab metallics naam ki company thi unke liye jv kara for seed structures for sorry seed structures ha सी स्ट्रक्चर्स एंड गेयर शिफ्टर्स एंड जब मनो था ये इनका बना था की जेबीज है जिसमें ये मार्केट लीडर है इनका गेयर शिफ्टर्स का बिजनेस है और इनका इंडिया में सेवेंटी परसेंट मार्केट शेयर है इन गेयर शिफ्टर्स तो अब ये इस चीज से भी कर पाए स्केल अप क्योंकि इनने जेबी करा था तो ऐसे अभी किसी ने पूछा था कि रेड फ्लैग है या नहीं है तो ये बेसिकली ऑटो इंजीनियर की प्रैक्टिस होती है अगर हमको कोई न्यू बिग प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट में जाना है तो हम खुद का प्रॉपर कीपेक्स करने के बदले कोई ग्लोबली एस्टेब्लिश प्लेयर क्या जेबी कर लेंगे जिसके थ्रू या तो हमारा ये बिजनेस स्केल अप जल्दी हो जाएगा या भी अगर लॉस हुआ भी तो हमारा जो प्राइमरी बिजनेस सेगमेंट है उसमें हमारे रिसोर्सेज लगे रहेंगे हमारे जैसे सेगमेंट में होते रिसोर्सेज वेस्ट नहीं होंगे क्योंकि मैनेजमेंट का प्राइमरी फोकस ये सेगमेंट पे रहेगा इनका जो की लाइटिंग बिजनेस है तो उनका मैनेजमेंट बैंडविथ वो एक्सपांड कर सकते हैं ना हर बिजनेस में अलग सा सीओ लगा दे तो इनका एग्जिस्टिंग बिजनेस की ग्रोथ कॉम्प्रोमाइज होगी बिकॉज ऑफ देर एक्सपांशन स्ट्रेटेजी इन टू डिफरेंट कैटेगरीज सो इसमें से दस में से दो या तीन जेबी से जनरली चलते हैं ऐसा इसका नेचर ही ऐसा क्योंकि ये तो जैसे गेयर शिफ्टर्स हो गया ऑक्सीजन सेंसर हो गया ये सब कोई बहुत बड़ी प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट थे नहीं बहुत देवर टारगेटिंग इज ये इस सेगमेंट का 500 या 600 करोड़ का रेवेन्यू प्रोफाइल है मार्केट साइज है तो व्हाट दे डू इज हम लोग फर्स्ट इंटरेंट बनेंगे और इसमें दस से पंद्रह या बीस का टारगेट करेंगे मार्केट शेयर तो इनका मनो में ये हुआ इनको सत्तर मार्केट शेयर मिल गया अभी कोई कोई बिजनेस में इनको खाली टेन मार्केट शेयर मिलने में प्रॉब्लम आ रही है तो दिस गिव्स एन ऑप्शनलिटी एंड मेक्स देर एग्जिस्टिंग बिजनेस मॉडल अ लिटल मोर डाइवर्सिफाइड बट वन कैन बेट इन टू दिस बिजनेस विच विल टॉक अबाउट मोर इन डिटेल सो प्राइमरी इनका कॉर्पोरेट स्ट्रक्चर ऐसा थोड़ा वियर सा लगेगा इसलिए मैं प्राइमरली बता रहा हूँ ये सब इनके जेबीज है और ये जेबीज इन्होंने सेटअप करे अलग अलग प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट में एंट्री पाने के लिए जैसे इन्होंने इतुरन क्या सेटअप करे फॉर टेलीमेटिक्स जोको वो क्या करे फॉर एंटीनास एल सेल पान के लिए करे फॉर इलेक्ट्रिक डिवाइसिस तो प्राइमरीली इनको कोई न्यू सेगमेंट में एंट्री चाहिए तो दे डू दैट थ्रू जेबीज सो वी डिस्कसिंग का कॉर्पोरेट स्ट्रक्चर क्या ये दो एंटिटीज की नीड क्या थी तो विद दैट इन माइंड हम बिजनेस में डेल्प करते थोड़ा सो इनकी बेसिकली थ्री लेगेड स्ट्रेटेडी है फॉर स्ट्रेटेजी फॉर ग्रोथ तो इनका बेसिकली तीन ये गोल है कि हमारे जो एग्जिस्टिंग कस्टमर जैसे बजाज हो गया हीरो और होंडा हो गया ये सब जो तो कस्टमर है इनका एक तो वॉलेट शेयर में हम पेनीट्रेट करेंगे जिससे हम एग्जिस्टिंग क्लाइंट से रेवेन्यू ले सकते हैं या फिर उनको हमारे जो दूसरे प्रोडक्ट्स है जैसे हमने इधर देखा इनके गेयर शिफ्टर्स हो गया ये सी स्ट्रक्चर हो गया ये सब हो गया इनका एक ये चीज़ अच्छा है कि जो इनके एग्जिस्टिंग कस्टमर है उनको भी एक क्रॉस सेल कर सकते हैं सब प्रोडक्ट अगर अपॉर्चुनिटी मिली तो तो ये एग्जिस्टिंग कस्टमर से ज़्यादा रेवेन्यू ले सकते हैं फिर ये अपना बिजनेस स्केल अप कर सकते हैं थ्रू जेबीज जैसे हमने अभी देखा ये लोग जेबीज काफी चीजों में कर रहे हैं जिससे इनके डिफरेंट प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट से रेवेन्यू आने लग जाए तो इनका एक ये की स्ट्रेटेजी है कि हमारे जेबी स्केल अप हो जैसे इनका मनो अभी करेंटली क्लोज टू टेन टू ट्वेल्व परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल रेवेन्यू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन दे रहे हैं बाकी सब जेबीज का कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इज वेरी लिमिटेड एंड इनका टोटल जेबी से कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन करेंटली ओनली ट्वेंटी परसेंट है एंड टारगेट के हमारा जेबी से कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन थर्टी फाइव तो हो ऐसा अगले तीन चार साल में ऐसा तो उससे जैसे अगर हमारा स्केल अप होगा जेबी बिजनेस तो अल्टीमेटली इनका जो रेवेन्यू है मार्केट है वो ग्रो हो जाएगा तो इनका ये स्ट्रेटेजी की है ऐसा जिससे इनका टोटल रेवेन्यू ग्रोथ आ सकता है और थर्ड ये है कि इनका आफ्टर मार्केट जैसे हमने देखा इनका जो आफ्टर मार्केट बिजनेस है ट्वेंटी परसेंट रेवेन्यू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन दे रहा है और आफ्टर मार्केट में अभी हम लोग थोड़ा और फेक्यूलरिटीज में डीप में जाएंगे बट बेसिकली इस सेगमेंट में ग्रोथ क्या क्या पॉजिटिव काफी ज्यादा है तो मैनेजमेंट इज कॉन्स्टेंटली टारगेटिंग हमारे हर दो तीन साल तीन साल में एटलीस्ट ये विजिट डबल होते रहना चाहिए सो इनहेरेंटली दे आर टारगेटिंग एटलीस्ट 20% का तो ग्रोथ आएगा हमारा के घर इस बिजनेस में से तो बेसिकली ये थ्री स्ट्रेटेजी के थ्रू दे एक्सपेक्ट किया हमारा आगे रेवेन्यू ग्रोथ आते रहेगा तो ऐसे मेरा अभी ब्रीफ इनका थोड़ा मैंने बताई थी आपको कि ये लोग विद द इंटरेस्ट ऑफ टाइम आई डोंट थिंक वी शुड स्पेंड अ लॉट टाइम इन दिस बट बेसिकली दे डू देव बीन इन एग्जिस्टेंस फॉर लास्ट 30 इयर्स एंड दिस बिजनेस वाज प्राइमरीली सेट अप टू केटर टू बजाज बिजनेस आफ्टर मार्केट बिजनेस एंड आल्सो डेल्व इनटू अदर प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट्स व्हिच लुमस इंडस्ट्री कांट So, ऐसे जो भी जे
बट ऑल्सो कंज्यूमर व्हीकल्स कमर्शियल व्हीकल्स दैट इज सो इसके से इनका जो और आफ्टर मार्केट हो गया तो इनका कोई पर्टिकुलर सेगमेंट में बहुत ज्यादा डिपेंडेंस है नहीं अभी एकदम फेली डाइवर्सिफाइड इनका मिक्स है जो हम आगे बात भी करेंगे तो इसके से इनका थोड़ा रेवेन्यू मिक्स थोड़ा ज्यादा डाइवर्सिफाइड और सेक्युलर हो सकता है एज कम्पेयर टू थीम बिकॉज उनका डिपेंडेंस ऑन टू व्हीलर्स मच है दैट इसमें इनका सीट फ्रेम बिजनेस आ गया इनका गेयर शिफ्ट का बिजनेस आ गया और ये सब चीज प्लास्टिक मॉडल में आ जाती है अभी न्यू बिजनेस स्टार्ट कर रहा है केसेस का जो ये बजाज और ये सब को देते हैं सर केसेस हो गया स्विंग आर्म टेलर हो गए तो अगेन इनकी काफी सारे प्रोडक्ट मिक्स है तो हम एक कोई प्रोडक्ट मिक्स को टारगेट करना इज मच डिफिकल्ट इसलिए उन्होंने ऐसे डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ही दे दिया सर तो प्लास्टिक मॉडल्स में इनका ये सब जो चेसिस और ये सब का जो बिजनेस आ गया वो आ गया फिर आफ्टर मार्केट में ये लोगों का मिक्स होता है काफी प्रोडक्ट्स का बट प्राइमरली इनका भी 75 परसेंट मिक्स इज कमिंग फ्रॉम लाइटिंग बिजनेस एंड दे एक्सपेक्ट की इनके जो नॉन लाइटिंग जो बिजनेस के प्रोडक्ट्स है उसका शेयर इन टोटल आफ्टर मार्केट मिक्स विल इंक्रीज जिसकी वजह से भी इनका आफ्टर मार्केट बिजनेस में ग्रोथ आने की काफी अपॉर्चुनिटी आ गई फिर इनका फेब्रिकेशन का बिजनेस है लाइटिंग का बिजनेस है एज ए टॉक इनका भी करेंटली आफ्टर मार्केट प्लस लाइटिंग को आप ज्वाइन करोगे तो आपको लाइटिंग बिजनेस का कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन थोड़ा ज्यादा अच्छे से आइडिया लेगा सो करेंटली रफली इनका ट्वेंटी फाइव थर्टी परसेंट लाइटिंग से आ रहा है सर वर्सेज लुमस इनका क्लोज टू सेवेंटी परसेंट लाइटिंग से आ रहा था फिर इनका एमिशन का बिजनेस हो गया अब एमिशन जैसे ये लोग ने जो यूरिया टैंक के लिए जे भी करा था ऐसा फॉर विथ कॉर्नल जीलिया तो वो सब बिजनेस इनके हो गए तो प्राइमरली इनके जेबी से भी काफी रिवेन्यू आ रहा है सर बट रिवेन्यू इज क्लोज टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट एंड एस बी नो अगर कोई आप मैनुफेक्चर हो आप अगर रेवेन्यू एक पर्टिकुलर हर्डल रेट हो देखिए सेवेंटी या सिक्सटी परसेंट कैपेसिटी यूटिलाइजेशन हो उसको अगर हमने आपने पार कर दिया तो फिर आपके मार्जिन स्टार्ट इंक्रीज सब्सटैंशली तो इसलिए करेंटली इनका जेबी से कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इज पैट नेगेटिव बट इनका रेवेन्यू इज पॉजिटिव है सर तो जैसे इनका ये बिजनेस स्केल अप होगा अभी और जो बिजनेस जो अभी इनके स्केल अप नहीं हुए जो अभी इनिशियल स्पेस में है उनका ड्राइव हटेगा तो इनका अपना जेबी से एकदम से पैट अच्छा नहीं लग जाएगा तो उसके से इनका ऑपरेशनल लेवरेज काफी अच्छा प्ले आउट हो सकता है इन दर जेबी सेगमेंट पर्टिकुलरली और अगर आप रेवेन्यू में देखें तो फेली डाइवर्सिफाइड ऐसे जस्ट टॉक्ड अबाउट कि टू व्हीलर्स इनका खाली 40 परसेंट ही कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन दे रहा है इनका पैसेंजर व्हीकल में 20 परसेंट है कमर्शियल व्हीकल में ट्वेंटी परसेंट है इनका आफ्टर मार्केट से भी बीस परसेंट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन आ रहा है तो इनका रेवेन्यू में काफी डाइवर्सिफाइड है वर्सेज समन लाइक फीम जस्ट अ सेकेंड आई Yeah, so we talked about the product mix. We talked about the revenue mix. So now let's go into the strengths. So today, we try to search any business. So we are trying to think that these are the at least four or five strengths that make them competitive. And these are four or five weaknesses that make them competitive. And then we will look at capital allocation and management. We will see the same flow like theme. So coming to strengths, their first business is aftermarket business. So I would like to take a little bit of time here. So why? What makes aftermarket business special? So aftermarket business me aisa hota hai ki suppose apne koi vehicle li. Abhi aapke vehicle kharaab ho gayi. Aap new vehicle jaake nahi loge. To aaj suppose kal Tata bolle ya fir Hero koi bhi bolle ki hamari vehicle ki sale ruk gaye. But wo jo humne existing vehicle sell kari hui hai, unke jo bhi hamare lighting the, hamare suppose mirrors the, wo sab to kharaab ho, uske toh mu replacement karana hi padega. तो इसलिए दैट मेक्स दैट बिजनेस अ लिटल इट साइक्लिकल वर्सेस द नॉर्मल ओएम बिजनेस तो इससे ये होता है कि तो इनका जो सिक्लिकलिटी एलिमेंट है वो थोड़ा रिड्यूस हो जाता है वर्सेस समवन लाइक थीम तो आफ्टर मार्केट बिजनेस स्पेशल है और वन मोर थिंग इज हाई एंट्री बैरियर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ स्केलिंग स्केलिंग दिस बिजनेस तो आज हमको सपोज कोई कंपनी के जाके आफ्टर मार्केट से लेना है तो हाउ विल वी डिफरेंशिएट बिटवीन टू आफ्टर मार्केट कंपनीज तो एक तो ब्रांड इक्विटी प्लेज अ मेजर रोल उनका डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क कितना स्ट्रॉन्ग है कितना प्रेजेंस है मेरे को अगर सपोज मेरे घर के पास कोई आफ्टर मार्केट जैसे सपोज हम लोग को लाइटिंग हमारी खराब हो गई तो वी वुड वांट कि हमारे हाईवेज में सपोज हम ट्रैवल कर रहे हैं तो हाईवे में कोई उनका डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क होना चाहिए कोई हमारे घर के पास डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क तो प्राइमरली ये गेम ही डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क है क्योंकि आप इसमें प्रोडक्शन उतना कर ही नहीं रहे तो जितना अच्छा डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क होगा जितना आप ग्रो हो गए उतना आपका नेटवर्क इवेज बढ़ते रहेंगे उतने लोग आपके यहाँ से बाइक करेंगे उतना किसी और एग्जिस्ट दूसरे प्लेयर के लिए आपका कस्टमर छीनना डिफिकल्ट हो जाएगा तो इस वजह से आफ्टर मार्केट बिजनेस स्केल अप करना बहुत डिफिकल्ट है 
जैसे जब ब्रांड इक्विटी बहुत होती है और इसमें अनऑर्गेनाइज सेगमेंट का काफी अच्छा शेयर है दे आर नॉट गिवन एनी पर्टिकुलर शेयर अनऑर्गेनाइज और ऑर्गेनाइज का बट वी नो क्या सब मेरी हेडलाइट टूट गई तो मैं कोई पर्टिकुलर ओएम को जाकर जो दिखाऊंगा नहीं कोई मेरे घर के पीछे हुआ किसी का ऐसे आफ्टर मार्केट का बिजनेस तो मैं उसको जाकर चेंज करूंगा तो इसमें अनऑर्गेनाइज सेगमेंट का इन्वॉल्वमेंट काफी ज्यादा है सर तो इसमें की थीसिस ये प्ले आउट कर सकती है कि वैल्यू माइग्रेशन हो सकता है फ्रॉम अनऑर्गेनाइज सेगमेंट टूवर्ड्स ऑर्गेनाइज सेगमेंट और अगर तब होगा तो ऐसा प्लेयर जिसका डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क बहुत सॉलिड है जिसकी ब्रांड इक्विटी है तो अल्टीमेटली वो ही बेनिफिट करेगा और अगर कोई ऐसा प्लेयर है जो खुद के प्रोडक्ट्स भी सप्लाई करता है इन देर आफ्टर मार्केट बिजनेस तो उसकी वजह से वो बिजनेस स्केल अप होना उसके इनहेंट एडवांटेज वर्सेज है कम्पिटिटर्स काफी ज्यादा हो गए और ये डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क सेटअप करने में कैपिटल आपका इनिशियली बहुत ज्यादा लगता है तो इसमें कैपिटल बैरियर भी आ जाता है आज मैं कोई अनऑर्गेनाइज सेगमेंट के लिए कुछ इतना एंट्री बैरियर नहीं होगा बट वो बिजनेस स्केल अप करने के लिए उसको भी डिफिकल्ट पड़ेगा क्योंकि आप बिजनेस से पैसा तो लगा दोगे आप डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन नेटवर्क को ग्रो करने में उसका एक पर्टिकुलर हर्डल रेट होगा कि 12 महीने 18 महीने बाद एकदम ढंग से रिवेन्यू ढंग से आने लगेगा तो बिजनेस को स्केल करने में एकदम इकोनॉमी को स्केल पाने में बहुत डिफिकल्ट है बिजनेस में तो दैट मेक्स इज डिफरेंट बिजनेस डिफरेंट फ्रॉम एनी अदर बिजनेस इसको एक तो स्केल अप करना बहुत डिफिकल्ट है इसमें थोड़ा रिवेन्यू स्टीम ज्यादा सिक्योर है बिकॉज आपने जो व्हीकल बेच वो तो मार्केट में रहेगी आपका सेल आया नहीं है आपका मार्केट रिसेशन में कुछ भी आपका एग्जिस्टिंग जो व्हीकल है उसमें अगर हेडलाइट टूट रही है तो मेरे को रिप्लेसमेंट करानी पड़ेगी तो इसकी वजह से और एक और चीज ये है कि इसमें मार्जिन वेरी करते हैं बट जनरली आफ्टर मार्केट में मार्जिन आर मच बेटर क्योंकि आप इसमें हम सेल कर रहे हैं उसमें ओ एम बाय करता था देर इज वन की डिफरेंस उसमें ओ एम की प्राइजिंग पावर था जैसे हमने उसमें हमने फीम में भी कवर करा था कि आज फीम है तो जो कम ओ एम्स होगा वो बार्गेनिंग पावर से काफी ज्यादा है सर इन कम्पेटिवली तो उसकी वजह से ऐसा पॉसिबिलिटी ज्यादा होता है कि आफ्टर मार्केट में वी कैन हैव हायर मार्जिन सॉरी यू वॉन्टेड टू से so dhruv uh, there is one request from mahesh that uh, try to continue as much in english as possible okay sure so, sir we'll do that sorry sir no issues yeah so basically what i said till now this why is this business special so firstly this business is not that cyclical as compared to the oem business secondly it this business is very difficult to scale up due to high capital intensity brand equity uh, need for brand equity in this business and high distribution network that is needed to get some scale in this business and thirdly because you are not directly uh, supplying to well established for uh, well established strong balance sheet players like oems so isme cash flow realization can be a trouble so isme main key problems ye hai scale up mein so now the benefits as, as i have talked about is my asset turnovers are much higher because you are not doing any major capex na you are just buying products from your supplier and selling to the end customers so you are not doing any major capex into this business other than setting the initial distribution network once that has been fructified then economies of scale can be immense in this business and the margins are better it is less cyclical and there is value migration so that is what makes this after market business so difficult to scale up as well as so special if one has done this well second is revenue stream so basically they are one of the preferred supplier for bajaj auto as we know that this business was created primarily to support the bajaj business so bajaj currently contributes 30 to 40% of the business so one can say ki this might be a bit negative ki if bajaj volume decreases then so will be the company's revenue and that is true but it also highlights the fact that there are very high entry barriers because no one can take their business of bajaj which already contributes 30 to 40% of revenue and bajaj being bajaj one of the biggest oem manufacturer in india so that provides a lend or even adds to the company's uh, brand side ki if bajaj has exclusive supplier as uh, lumux as its uh, exclusive supplier so that ensures ki inki product quality would be nice so they can get business from other oems as well although they have been operating for last 20 30 years so they have their own brand equity also but having businesses with decent oems add to the major entry barrier that it is secondly contribution from after market adds to its secularity and there is very diverse revenue stream as we talked about they are not primarily dependent on two wheeler or three wheeler segment they also get contribution not just from passenger vehicles but also from commercial vehicles like they are one of the biggest suppliers to tata the daimler also is i think one of their uh, sub, uh, customers i am not sure about that so they are supplying to tata and also saying so 
they can get share from commercial vehicles also, which FEM can't. So that is one thing. And also EV disruption, even if it comes, then their business like gear shifters. So that business won't be affected by EV disruption. Rather, people will opt for premium gear shifters. So this EV thing, one thing that is common across all these companies is that EV thing, even if it plays out, that would disrupt this their business model. Rather, that would create more demand for the products because they are transi transitioning towards premium products. And if EV comes, they will need premium products due to their advantages. So because of that, this transition will happen more quickly than what it would have been if EV was not there. So that makes this business a bit more robust. And lastly, their order book is close to 600 crores. So what they're saying is, is that because just of their existing order book, they can easily grow for 15 to 20% in their next two to three years. As well. Third is EBITDA margins. So if one will track its EBITDA margins, they were close to eight to 9%. But in last four to five years, they have increased their EBITDA margins and currently their EBITDA margin is close to 11 or 12%, I guess. And they've been able to scale up this business so well. And despite the fact that JVs are currently contributing negative part. So once that business scales up and they reaches a particular turnover, then that business will also add to their EBITDA margins because what the management believes is that standalone entities margin is much less than their JV's margin if that business scales up well. So they are, they are targeting anywhere close to 13% of EBITDA margins. And if the contribution of JV increases like they're expecting that their EBITDA margins should head upwards only. And as we, we as just said, there is a trend of premiumization in gear shifter and lighting business because they are also lighting brand. Na? So if there is a shift from halogen based lighting to LED based lighting, even they will benefit. And if there is better performance from joint ventures, then that should add to their EBITDA margins. And also operation leverage if plays out because the capacity utilization is not a lot. Now again, one can give a particular rate key 70% capacity utilization here because their capacity is very fungible. They can produce several different products. So it varies. So they don't give any target key ethnic capacity utilization here, but they are doing they are constantly incurring capex in the form of their existing JVs. And they expect that as their business increases, they would incur capex, but currently don't have any major plans. But one important thing to note is that they expect to benefit from the PLI scheme in their JV business, not a standalone business, but in their JV business. So they have not given any particular numbers as such till now. He what will be the benefits? They are still evaluating that, but they expect to get benefits from PLI scheme in their JV segment. So with that being said, should move to the next point. So next, uh, second, third point is EBITDA margin should head upwards from now onwards. And fourth is strong customer. I have already highlighted that that Bajaj contributes. So I think I should not go into that, but one important thing to note is that like if one will track Bajaj business, so it has not grown a lot in the last two to three years at least, but because of their diverse product line, they are able to supply products like cases and swing arm trailer to Bajaj. And because of that, even though the Bajaj business was declining, like uh, vehicles of Bajaj were declining, sales vehicles of sales of vehicles, but still they were able to grow that business at a faster pace than Bajaj inherent growth. And in general, I would like to highlight one important thing about this business is that one thing that is common across all the businesses is that they are able to outperform their industry growth rate. So that is one of the key thing to look for in terms of competitive advantage towards the business that how can the company grow better than the industry. And in case the industry starts growing, then this businesses can grow exponentially. So that is one of the key pieces behind three, these three companies also. So yeah, Bajaj contributes currently close to 40% of the revenues. They want key revenues from Bajaj had any anywhere close to 30% of the total revenues. But if they will get new revenues from Bajaj in the form of swing uh, arm trailers, cases and all such things, then they don't mind increasing their share because they have been supplied to Bajaj for last 20 to 30 years. So that business is one of the biggest contributor of their success till now. And this other product lines, they have added and by chance, something like gear shifters have clicked for them, which currently contributes 11% and they have 70% market share in that business. But Bajaj is one of the major reasons how, why this business is scaled up. And secondly, they are increasing the wallet share in Bajaj and Honda. And currently they are guiding key, so new, new vehicles like Kia, MG and all such are using uh, 
or rather choosing Lumux as a supplier. So they are seeing traction in that space, although the revenue is very paltry in comparison to the total revenue, but that business can also scale up further in future. So that can be one good thing to play out in future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see their extensive uh, customers profile. So they, well, uh, yeah, yeah, they are targeting Daimler also in the commercial vehicle space. So Tata, Mahindra and all such major OEMs are their uh, customers. So that pilot scheme ka customer base is very sound and it is not spread in one particular segment, but across the segments like in four wheeler, commercial vehicle, two wheeler and even three wheeler. And they're also exporting also the, although the contribution is not much currently, but management expects that the contribution from export should increase in the next two to three years. Why? Because suppose in Lumos Menno, they are the market leader in gear shifters. So they expect that since they have the 70% share in India, so then next thing would be to try to go in export market and see how that plays out. So that thing can happen, but currently management is not giving any major guidance because they think that they are currently, currently at evaluation phase and they expect that to play out in next two to three years. But that can play out and that can be a good optionality variant in that business. Last one. Yeah, and strong R&D department. So as, as I've said, R&D is one of the keys towards success in this auto ancillary business. Why? Because they create one so, sort of entry barrier so that the existing OEMs will continue to work with them and not choose some other supplier. And also because of brand equity and after and also their presence in their aftermarket segment, they are able to ensure that they they can command a bit higher margin in aftermarket segment versus peers, and also being one of the uh, strong relationships with having strong relationship with Lumos Industries. So I would like to highlight one point that in their aftermarket business, roughly thirty three percent of the products that they sell comes from Lumos Industries. It's other group company, and they are done at an arm arm basis. Malab. They don't have any you know, professional agreement with them. And since both are listed entities, so they can't get ki hamara sort of pricing sasta or something else. So that is completely an option, but that is one thing that one needs to look for. Ki one can consider that as a red flag as well, key related party transition. But we use it, view it as a positive. Ki since group entity hai, to they will have to supply through their aftermarket segment only. Lumos Industries aftermarket segment only. only. So that will ensure key. If someone wants Lumos Industries product, then they will have to go towards Lumos Autotech for getting their product in aftermarket segment. So that, that is one key thing that they have good relationships with their business uh, customers and as well as suppliers in their aftermarket business. And yeah, brand equity plus, as we said, brand equity plus regular addition is equal to growth of after, aftermarket business. So currently what they expect is lighting businesses contributing close to 75% of their total aftermarket business. They want this to shift towards only 50% and non lighting segment to contribute 50%. So through new product additions, they expect this to happen in next coming years. They're not targeting any particular revenue time for that, but they expect this to happen. So that will happen. Their margins might also increase upwards in their aftermarket segment. And one of the beauty of this business is when they have scaled up their aftermarket business. Okay. So they don't need to do any additional capex because they are doing that capex in their extensive business. And they can simply transfer those products to this business. So they can provide both lighting as well as non lighting components from the same distribution center. So that links to the credibility as well as power of this aftermarket segment. So with that, I think we have covered all the stents now highlighting the management. So this is also a family run business. This is a part of DK Gen group. That was part of JK Gen group. This is a part of DK Gen group. This may DK Gen is now currently retired and both his sons are managing the entity. So basically Deepal Gen is handling Lumos Industries and Deep uh, Anmol Gen is handling Lumos Autotech and both are directors in both the companies and both have active participation in the businesses. So again, there is skin in the game in this business because they have 56% stake in this business and they have close to 30 to 40 years of experience running the business. So they have good experience running the business. And as I just said, Anmol Jain is heading, he is managing director and, and he is primarily heading Lumos Autotech. Deepak Jain is heading Lumos Industries and he was a 
Dhanesh Kumar Jain was the pioneer behind Lumos Industries, and he was the promoter, and he is still the promoter. Yeah. So now coming to that, we will come into financials, and after financial, we can have that Q&A session. If it's fine. Okay. So before. Yes, no, go ahead. Yeah. So before we delve into financials, once again, the three key things that we look for during capital allocation, that is merger and acquisition slash joint venture, diversification into different product lines and dividend distribution. So if we see merger and acquisition, that strategy, according to us, has not played out well in the past. So because of the, that, if we, if one will see their past five years record, that has not been as good as someone like PM because not only has their JV business not scaled up well, but had, that has contributed to negative part. So ultimately their margins have not expanded as much as uh, themes have. So that has been a major, what should I say, not a big success for them so far. They expect this to happen in future. Like if when we will see Lumas Manho business that is currently contributing 10 to 12% of the total business. And they have scaled that business very well because they are, they have 70% market share in India for gift shifters. And they expect he, whichever business may they enter, they get at least 100% turnover and 10 to 15% of market share. But unfortunately, they haven't able to get those figures till now. And then new JVs like Ponyajilia, then for oxygen sensor business, and also think they are targeting for BS6 opportunities. So what happened is after BS6 norms, government made it mandatory to have oxygen sensors and particular type of urea tanks in the vehicles, so that emissions come off and the environment and friendly and all such things. So keeping that in mind, they thought that early entry le le towards this business and that will aid them into getting 10 to 15% uh, market share. But their market itself has not grown like they predicted. So because of that, that has, that has been a major drag in their performance so far, other than Lumos Meno and even Cornelia before this year, that was being a major drag, but now that urea tank business has scaled up rapidly and it is currently contributing close to 50 crore business. So it is scaling pretty rapidly and they have good pipeline and even oxygen sensor business. Now they have good customers in that segment. So they expect that business to grow rapidly, but two to three failures that they expected uh, experience in this segment is first was Gill and company. So they had one joint venture with Gill company, which was basically located in USA and that was a seat frame business. But unfortunately, due they were first they were not able to scale up this business. Secondly, due to some distress to Gill Company, they had to buy by the entire state. So then they consolidated that entity into their business. But again, that strategy didn't work out of JV. Then second was Sipal. So what they thought that military engineering service is one business where there is not much capex requirement and where there is large growth opportunities. So did they did one JV with a company named Sipal of Italy which was already involved in this business. But that JV also didn't fructify and there was some conflict of interest wherein Sipal was supplying to some other military service or some, there was some weird connection. So because of which Lumax said that, okay, you have the control and previously they had some 51% share in that JV. So now they ceded that control to a Sipal and this business is not contributing anything to the revenue. And so this was a major letdown also. And third is, just like theme, they also tried to venture into LED luminary business, but just like theme, they were unable to scale up this business due to poor competitive dynamics of the industry, entire industry itself. So that also didn't play out well for me. Now, if we come to diversification, as we just saw, they are diversifying into several product lines, but still they are able, they are not able to generate any major substantial revenue or margin from any particular revenue. Also to just to substantiate all the product lines that they are adding currently, like oxygen sensor and all, they have mid teen margins. That is they're targeting anything between 13 to 15% margins in the new JVs. So if they scale out like they expect, then their overall EBITDA margin should scale upwards. But other than Manhua plant, wherein they have gear shifter business and currently for Cornelia, urea tanks and even oxygen sensor, they have not been able to scale up their other product lines so far. So that the diversification tactic has not been a major success so far and the dividend distribution strategy. So currently they have 35% dividend distribution strategy. So that is pretty decent according to us. And now coming to financials. 
So if you will see the revenue has been very stagnant. So one of the reasons for this revenue being stagnant that I will cover. So this picture can be a bit deceptive at first. Why? Because as I just said, I will cover about that more in depth in later slides. That will be a bit better. So as we said, the EBITDA margin has not scaled a lot because of the drag from JVs. And Pat has also not scaled that much that they would have liked. So the performance in the last five years has been okay, but considering the performance of the in general passenger vehicle, OEMs and other business, it has been pretty decent because they have actually reported stable quarter and they've been able to still grow better than their industry. So that is one thing that one should comment about the business. Yeah, dividend on all sets in the I think. I mean, yeah, so key takeaways is that they've been able to grow at 9% CAGR, their sales in the last five years, despite the industry degrowing or being stable. So that is one good thing. Their ROC have been very robust at close to 20%. So that is also because of good aftermarket business because the capital intensity is not that much in that business. So that aids their ROC. And despite poor contribution from JVs, they are able to maintain 20% ROC. So imagine if JVs start performing, then their ROC can trend upwards a lot. So they expect key Inca peak ROC was 28%. So they expect in the coming years, they can again reach that level, which for an auto ancillary is amazing. Then stock Kegar for last five years have been 18%. Was in uh, earnings Kegar of 14%. So as I've just mentioned in that slide also, uh, in a uh, few industries about compounding multiple. So it's probably compounding multiple is greater than one. So anything close to 1.5 is very decent accounting trust because that means that market has a positive perception about the business and there is some sense of growth expected from this business in future. And fifth is again, market's confidence in the story and competitive advantages that the business has. Also, we believe that this business should command a higher valuation vis-a-vis -vis someone like Theme because it's, it's not just a pure play lighting business, it's a pure play two-wheeler segment business. They are fairly diversified. A good hefty portion of their revenue is coming from aftermarket mix. So because of that also, this even though the revenue growth might not be that much like theme, but still this can be an interesting stock to track if the cycle turns upwards. I think I've covered everything. Yeah, but only antithesis left. So we after that we can have the question, I think. So yeah, if every good thesis have a very good antithesis also. So in this business, same is the case. So I've talked about the aftermarket business. In that business, the working capital realization can be a bit troublesome. So in that business, as we can see, they have high debt realization. So su suppose there is lack of liquidity in the market. So even if they expect that there is end user demand, but due to lack of liquidity, they have to abort or tone down their growth in their aftermarket business. So that is one key thing to look forward because cash flow realization in their aftermarket business is very difficult and a challenging task for them. Although they have been able to perform reasonably well so far, but that adds to the spice now. Aftermarket business is less cyclical, but there is one risk factor also. That unlike OEM supply, this business can have some data realization issues. Then as I talked about in film, ki usme OEMs didn't want ki they sell that particular products in aftermarket. So the same is the case with them. Like in the last year, in quarter one year, quarter two, I don't remember it exactly. Mahindra wanted Numbers uh, to stop supplying the same products that they are offering to Mahindra in their aftermarket. So that hampered that revenue of revenue or turnover of for two to three quarters of close to 25 crores. Although they got their approval later on and they've started their uh, supplying that components again, but that, that led to revenue loss of 25 crores within two to two quarters only. So that is one major risk that one have to track because if suppose uh, new other OEMs also start saying ki don't sell this product in aftermarket, then that can hamper the business in aftermarket business. So that is one key thing to track and inability to scale up that much. I have talked about this in depth and high dependence of Bajaj. Cyclicality in auto industries. I think all these points are self expected and I have covered in depth. So I don't think we should go in depth, but there is one major red flag that I found out in this business. So I would like to talk about that in depth. So yeah, SMT line business. Someone asked ki SMT line ka benefits kya hai? 
सो बेसिकली इफ वन हैज एस एम टी लाइन सो दैट एनश्योर्स की यू आर बैकवर्ड इंटीग्रेटेड और फिर आप कॉस्ट कंपेटिवली एलईडी लाइटिंग प्रोड्यूस कर सकते हो सो वॉट वॉज द केस इज देर वॉज दे हैड वन एस एम टी लाइन इन दैट वॉज एन इंट्रा ग्रुप एसेट बट बेसिकली द कंट्रोल वॉज विद लूमस ऑर्डर टेक सो वॉट दे यूज टू डू इज दे यूज टू प्रोवाइड दिस एस एम टी लाइन टू लूमस इंडस्ट्रीज or provide dress provide this service to lumax industries because they had their lighting business so from that business they achieved a peak revenue of 170 crores in one year so what what happened because this was an inter group asset and because 100% from the revenue mix was coming from lumax industries so suddenly they sold this asset at market rate of close to 22 to 23 crores for a asset that was generating 170 crores like suppose if someone will go to buy the asset they might be able to buy that asset for 22 to 23 crores in market also i am not denying the price about that but the fact that they completely ceded that control to lumax industries which was one related party and that asset was contributing close to 170 crores and they said ki lumax hamare kuch oem similar hai so they wanted ki lumax industries should be backward integrated but i felt that this was a robbery for normal shareholder like us because suddenly 170 crore of top line was wiped out although if lumax industry would have sourced from some other company so as it is this top line would be wiped out because 100% of the revenue mix was coming from lumax industries but my key question is why didn't they try ki they get some another oems jisko they can supply this uh, smd line business ya fir why was Lumos industry not supplying or getting the service of SMT from film industries, which as you have seen that they had six to eight SMT lines versus just one of Lumos Auto Tech. So they must be more cost competitive uh, versus uh, Lumos Auto Tech. So why was this not sourced from film industry? So that are key questions that arises. I am not saying that that is any major, but uh, again this is a major aspect because. Even though this might be all the arms length basis transactions, but still this is a intergroup transaction, na. So there might be a question arising. That suppose today SMT line they procured from Lumos Auto Tech. So what stops them from starting their own aftermarket division? And if they realize that aftermarket division me they can get higher margins. So why to sell them to Lumos Auto Tech if we can directly sell it directly through their own aftermarket? Although they don't have any aftermarket mix now. But they can start that if they feel that our product is, we can directly sell to the customers. So again, this conflict of interest can happen. So that is one major red flag that one needs to be cognizant about. Of this is all. So that concludes our Lumos Industries presentation, Lumos Auto Tech presentation. So now we can have questions. Great, great point. Specifically on the red flag, uh, I see a few questions on the. Uh, chat box and i also see abhyukt uh, sorry avadut raising his hand so avadut i have uh, sent you a request you can uh, please go ahead uh, uh great presentation uh, thanks dhruv few points mm -hmm. uh, just i want a uh, clarification about gear shift uh, gear shifters uh, i uh, if my understanding is correct it is it is used into four pillars right right and what what you mentioned is ev and uh, so this is first order thinking i could first be wrong thing. gear shifters are also used in two wheelers also uh, but uh, what image i saw into the presentation i think lumax is uh, usme they ha usme four wheeler mein to obviously contribution aa raha hai but it is also used in two wheelers also like image mein thodi si kam thi jaise isme normal gear shifter diya tha abhi unka transition also ho raha hai aisa towards automatic gear shifters to matlab Yeah, if, if I remember correctly, uh, auto vehicles and uh, EVs will not have gear shifters, right? Is that the correct understanding? I don't know about that, but the key thing that I know about this business is even if EV comes, what they are mentioning is some products like emission system or ये सब जो होगा, उनका usage might increase. And थोड़े इनके जो product line है, that might hamper तो gear shifters might be the one. Yeah, I yeah, I'm, just, I'm fo yeah, focusing yeah. on the on the gear shifters because yeah, yeah. I haven't seen in auto vehicles or EVs uh, we don't see gear shifters whether it is two wheelers right. or four wheelers, right? Yeah, and yeah. mopeds also we don't see go gear. Shifters. So that's one point. The two points I wanted to mention first about you. Uh, 
uh, in aftermarket. So if you look at, oh, uh, this is just the insights what I have uh, because I have worked into that industry, that auto industry, that's I want to give. First right, is right. about uh, aftermarket. So aftermarket and OEM, if you compare, OEM is a high volume, low margin business. And aftermarket is a low volume, high margin business. Aftermarket, you won't have volumes throughout the year. You one month you will be having. So it's it's a way to increase your capacity utilization. If you have seventy percent capacity utilization and you have idle capacity, uh, you can sell it into the market using the same capacity, but you can get more realizations. Volumes will be pretty thin over there. Mm -hmm. So that's first. Second about JVs, the basic criteria for JVs uh, is the technology transfer. You can't get the technology or you can't uh, uh, enhance the knowledge of your people immediately about something. So you want to get a technology within shorter span of time. So mm -hmm. first and foremost reason uh, these uh, manufacturing companies work for JVs is technology transfer. And lastly about SMT lines, I don't know if you have exposure to any assembly lines. SM SMT lines is nothing but the assembly lines which are automated ones. Okay. okay. Uh, so the major reason is the supplier of the SM, these SMT lines, whatever you are trying, these are based on the su surface mounted technology lines, which are producing uh, parts. So you, you have to look at it in two ways. First, if your competitor is also putting SMT lines, that means the volume is going to come into the market, then the margins or the water owner is going to get is going to be less. Same analogy which Warren Buffett has given in the past about textile industry and stuff. That's mm -hmm. one. Second, SMT lines, mostly we get it from the uh, OE, OE, uh, manufacturers which are uh, situated into other regions, not in India. So mm -hmm. this SMT lines, Siemens could be the one. Th these are manufacturers outside India. So it's a, there is a lead time. If you want to get the SMT line immediately, it's uh, you have to send your engineer, you have to give, give the procurement list. This is kind of uh, SMT line we want. This would be the production. And you have to look at line balancing. I don't know whether you are aware about the line balancing kind of thing. So if you move one part into the uh, manufacturing, it will affect the another part. It's not like I am producing, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, let's say it, a simple example. That if you are producing food and uh, the raw material parts, so let's say uh, if I don't bring the raw material part of it, but I'm increasing the productivity of the end product, that wouldn't suffice, right? We are, I have to concentrate on the raw materials. So whenever you are increasing capacity, you have to look the whole picture. You can't look at separate point of it. So uh, two things, that that's because SMT line, you cannot get it immediately and you can't start producing immediately. Mm -hmm. So th there is a lag of one year at least. So that's the reason company would prefer transferring the tech and get if they are getting customers they would have transferred it there is a uh, ample request from the uh, client and there they can fill in the capacity that would have been the one of the reasons and you can't transfer get a smt line from other supply okay so it is built to their technology your assembly line would be built to your technology, your parts would be different, your uh, complete assembly, the pressures, what you maintain into that assembly line, uh, the jigs, pictures, all would be different. So it's not that easy to transfer that SMT. Okay. Okay. Right. If you need any insights onto it, I am ready. Sure, sure. I have no clue about this. Okay. I can then use... Then first, why LATL and not female pointing here? Huh? Ah, I can right. give more details offline. Okay. That's it. Sure, sure. I love you, man. Thank you so much, Abdut. And before we move on to the next question, that is what I want to highlight. So this is the advantage of having an open discussion like this. And when we have our Mission Smile members who have so Abdut has a very good experience in the manufacturing industry. Similarly, we have other people who have a very good uh, uh, experience in the IT industries. And that is where we get a lot of on ground uh, insight which you will not get from the con calls and the annual reports. I'm not saying con calls and annual reports are not important. Of course, they are important. But the but the main crux and the main advantage of having a discussion like this is that you get a good mix of what the management is saying, what is written in the annual reports, what is uh, available on the con call, and then what you see on the ground. And then you can connect the dots. That is the advantage of having a discussion like this, right? So with, the, with that, I'll uh, move on to the question. Uh, Hemant has a question. 
why don't the pm also do the same by floating a separate entity to service aftermarket they can even partner with oem initially for the distribution reach by explaining them how this will improve the customer experience by quick turnaround since they are the ones developing the product in the first place they have been trying to develop their aftermarket mix for very long but it is as i said it is not very easy to do that stuff they are trying like four wheeler passengers mein why don't they have entry they are trying to get entry but abhi current structure aisa hai ki oem ki relationship with their suppliers are so strong that to get entry into that is quite difficult so the same is the case with aftermarket so they are trying to grow their existing aftermarket business and it contributes to close to 2 to 3% of revenue but it is not very substantial so they are trying to increase that and yeah and basically latl was aftermarket mix again that abdul bhaiya said ki it is used to use increase the capacity utilization but one thing that one needs to understand about this business is the peculiar relationship between lumos industries and lumos auto tech so the oems that lumos industries are supplying lumos auto tech even though if they can supply them better they can't supply to that so they have less options for growth so because of that they have to focus even more on aftermarket versus other companies and they develop their special product line just for their aftermarket segment because they can't do go directly na to oems because lumos industries are already already servicing to some of them so that can be both a positive as well as a negative because that restricts them to that particular segment also but that segment is very difficult to scale up and they have proven to do so and usme kabhi conflict nahi hai ki ye product oem mana kar de aisa kar de ki they are developing their special product lines for aftermarket specifically and that can be done by other companies like pm right so i think you have covered uh, covered this point a little in your presentation but uh, this is a question what is their moat when the margins are in single digit historically uh, piyush has asked this question so if one see the gear shifter business i can tell you about moats on the basis of the two different business segments so like in terms of urea tank or oxygen sensor they are the first movers okay in te- in telematics they are the first mover currently that re- that revenue pie is not substantial now but since they are the first mover they might be able to take benefit of that in gear shifter as i have already told they have 70% market share and even though the ev opportunity might not play out and they are not telling ki hamara ev ke se itna aane wala hai all this says hamara ev se disruption nahi hoga and e- main cheez ye hai ki jo inke ye gear shifters hai isme bhi premiumization ka trend ho raha hai from normal shifters to automatic shifters usme inka 1.5 to 2x revenue realization milta hai aur abhi jo bhi inke new oems jo bhi aa rahe hai usme inka yahi shift aa raha hai same in oxygen sensors jo bhi aa new company aayegi oems unko oxygen sensor government mandatory kar rahi hai to uske se inka market size apna aap badh jata hai and inka jo lighting business hai inka khud se kafi 30 saal se inka operations hai totally backward integrated hai ye log bhi and inka acha distribution network hai तो इनका मेरे सबसे टू कट शॉर्ट इनका फर्स्ट मोटरिस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एडवांटेज सेकंड इज बिकॉज दे आर अ बिग प्लेयर इनका 1500 हंड्रेड करोर्स का टोटल रेवेन्यू साइज है सिमिलर टू द स्केल ऑफ फीम तो बिकॉज दर स्केल इकोनॉमिक स्केल की इनको बेनिफिट मिलते हैं थर्डली दे आर फर्स्ट मूवर इन सेवर कैटेगरीज लाइक गेयर शिफ्टर ऑक्सीजन सेंसर एंड ऑल फोर्थली बिकॉज दे हैव स्ट्रॉग रिलेशनशिप विद क्लाइंट्स लाइक बजाज हीरो इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू रिप्लेस दैम सो दैट किड्स switching cost so that are one of the right. and also because of their uh, strong jbs with other companies that can give their tech transfer as abdul bhaiya rightly said so that can also provide them a moat but i can't quantify that is like i am not substantiating on that front a lot but basically these four points we can say for sure that that is something that the company has so manan has a very interesting question as in uh... how do we value this business and isn't pm overvalued compared to lumex auto tech yeah. so again before you answer this question we are not here to make any recommendation yeah, yeah. but uh, dhruv you, you are free to share what is your view on the same yeah see valuation ke bahut perspective hote hain some can do discounted cash but some can do comparative valuation so if one will see currently screen mein agar if you will see the p ratio it is close to similar for both pm and lumex i don't know aap personal aise bolo ki lumex auto ka that expensive because what i saw is lumux auto that is not lumux industries this is lumux auto tech limited people often confuse 
between Lumos Industries and Lumos Autotech Limited. So if we compare the valuations in the fee valuation for both Lumos and Lumos Autotech Limited and Film Industries, it is both close to 18 to 19 fee. And what I'm trying to say is theme if one has to value prop purely on the basis of lighting business, I will still rate theme higher than Lumos Industries. But Lumos ka one major benefit, and if you will see past track record also, he has grown its revenue by 26% in the last 10 years. Like if one will see at one particular time, Lumos auto tax revenue was higher than theme and theme was smaller than that, but it has come at par in very less time. So past track record, the theme should command high valuation versus Lumos industries because Lumos auto tech, because the past record is good and future may be guidance is good, but अगर हम उनका रिवेन्यू में देखें तो इट इस हाईली स्क्यूड टुवर्ड्स टू व्हीलर सेगमेंट। अगर आप लास्ट टेन इयर्स देखोगे तो टू व्हीलर्स हैव कंफर्टेबली आउटपरफॉर्म फोर व्हीलर सेगमेंट। बट आगे क्या हो ये होगा ये ये नहीं होगा हमको बिल्कुल आइडिया नहीं। तो अगर हमको थोड़ा मार्जिन ऑफ सेफ्टी तो भी एट द एंड ऑफ द डे 20% ही है ऐसा और उनका 40% बजाज से आ रहा है तो इफ बजाज गोस डाउन तो इसके भी रेवेन्यूज विल फॉल्टर आई एम नॉट डिनाइंग दैट फैक्ट बट सिंस इट्स रेवेन्यू प्रोफाइल इज अ बिट डाइवर्सिफाइड एंड इनके डिफरेंट प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट्स में है एंट्री तो नाउ वन कैन वैल्यू इट इन टू वेज कि या तो बिकॉज़ इट हैज प्रेजेंस इन डिफरेंट सेगमेंट्स इट इज नॉट कंप्लीटली डिपेंडेंट ऑन लाइटिंग सेगमेंट तो उनको हर वैल्यूएशन हर प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट के थोड़ा एक्स्ट्रा वैल्यूएशन दो बिकॉज़ इट इज फेयरली डाइवर्सिफाइड and another way is to look at it is console uh, conglomerate discount de do because koi ek particular product mein targeted nahi hai different different product line mein ja raha hai sa like we see as a special situation mein hota hai se paramal ka uh, dhfl ka ek alag sa business hai aur normal uh, pharma ka alag business dono ka alag alag valuation dene ki baat karte hain to waise hi hum soch sakte hain ki iske itne sare product line isliye usse iski wajah se shayad se isko thoda valuation mein discount bhi de sakte hain market so again there are various way to perceive its valuation but the primary thing that one should focus on its business and what we feel it if it is by a reasonable valuation and other again growth hair and already we all know the theme plot for the last part of mine is if you one will see both is k lumos auto tech k film k prices have almost doubled in last six months so as i had nikki will pull i'm near diamonds in the dust types of course alexa gold mine or a stock nikola but what we believe in in key valuations are not very overvalued and if they continue to grow it at decent pace then their stock price should follow that earnings growth that would be one of the most decent and safe answer which we can give so that was a good point about diamond in the dust <laughs> so so uh, i think uh, ananta has asked uh, have you come across any other related party transaction which uh, will which is worth mentioning here no, basically when a SMT line transfer was one, but now I get that point also ki why they might have transferred the SMT line. Now I have more understanding about that. So this, you know, why not source from film? That point was wrong from my part. I understood it differently. And secondly, one point is that other aftermarket segments say Joby sale hoti 30% sales are coming from uh, Loomis Industries. So these are these two are primarily the major uh, related party transaction. Other than that, I don't think there are any substantial ones. But uh, but yeah. only major thing that one needs to keep in mind is that Lumos industry relationships. एक तो इसका फायदा ये कि Lumos will only provide their products to this uh, aftermarket segment. खाली इनको ही देगी. But one major negative is that it because of this conflict of interest, they can't enter their territory. Like they can't go to uh, customers that Lumos industries are already catering to. So that is one big problem that creates. That is one basic that one needs to keep in mind. Suppose as a thought I keep, why I need to, they're not catering to this particular customer. Then there is a big possibility that is because of Lumos Industries. Yeah. And they don't have any unlisted business. All are a part of a consolidated business and they have subsidiaries and joint ventures that I've already mentioned. And other than that, Lumos Group has one entity where they transferred up. That is one other transaction that happened. They transferred that LED luminaries segment to another company of Lumos, but that is only 4% of total Lumux group. So they have three entities and that contribution is negligible. So I don't think that is one major red flag one should think of. Other than that, 
think so next know. question is from Lavina. She asks, uh, who are the key competitors of Lumex uh, Autotech? Again, theme would be one, Minda would be another. These three primarily come to my mind immediately. Gear shifter me to primarily yellow market leader yet is making competitor at the putting and two three there are other companies, but they are foreign listed companies. So I don't remember the name. We can get back to you after this presentation if you want. Uh, Pius ask uh, Pius is asking, isn't it that market share is not resulting in ability to pass on price increase? So basically, if one will read what I didn't mention here is if one will read on call of theme versus Lumex. So Lumex actually claims to have some pricing power versus theme. But what we have already covered close to six to seven companies in auto ancillary space in Mission Smile platform. So we know that if someone is saying that auto ancillary has some pricing power, then so most probably it will not be true. So we will see it in the prices. Because these OEMs have a lot of bargaining power. So all these comments about pricing power, we don't take that with heart. Because we know that ending a bargaining power OEMs ke paas hi hai sir. Aur wo chahe to aram se business ki sir ko de sakte hai sir. Isliye they mention ki they have some sort of pricing power, but we don't really put a lot of caution and we believe ki performance will show that if they have to. Right. It also depends upon Dhruv uh, how easy or difficult it is uh, for the product which they are developing. So right. I believe uh, say we have covered two businesses, uh, Sansera Engineering and uh, I'm forgetting the other company's name. Craftsman. Craftsman automation, craftsman automation. So, uh, I would probably believe that uh, those two businesses have far better pricing power compared to uh, FEM and uh, uh, Lumex. And that is why you will see that generally they will probably trade at a higher uh, valuation, premium valuation compared to this. Again, a disclaimer, we are not making any recommendation and we don't have any holding in any of the stocks discussed uh, as of now. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, I think this, we can take this last question before we uh, move ahead in the uh, third uh, company. Any other unlisted businesses that not, that you have already covered? Anand asked that question. Okay, I think then we can uh, continue. Okay, so the last business of today is crowd favorite SGS Enterprise. Crowd favorite. <laughs> I like every, it. <laughs> whenever I go to Twitter, everyone is posting something you know. It is a very decent business. That is why we are covering that business. But again, people would like to know more about this business. I feel so. Firstly, again, how did we come about come up with this business? So it was not because of Twitter. Obviously, Twitter acts as a great source. Like we came to know about that a uh, film industries value news through Twitter. But suppose there is one say, industry segment which is growing at an exponential pace, and there are only one listed player in that segment. So how will you value that player? So there is one possibility that you give them extra valuation because of scarcity, because there are no other listed players. And if you, if some, suppose I am an FII, FII and I want exposure in this particular industry and I don't have any particular player, so I have to invest in that business. So what we believe that there is a possibility that because of this scarcity premium, there, where there is one industry and there is only one player. Because of that, one might get a better valuation for these businesses. Better valuation in the sense market will provide it better valuations. And this scarcity from premium model is not restricted to just in just an industry itself. We can see several examples of scarcity premium in our daily lives. Suppose we see a small cap stock. It has posted excellent results, but the float that is a shares available in the market are so little. And, but the people are so confident about the growth story that they will buy that stock because they know that it's a float come to already the price for a bird but they want to be a part of the story. So because of that, the stock might command, command better valuations versus the uske thode shares are available in market. Mein. So we see this mental, mental model in our daily lives. Like beach mein sir, platform network ka kaafi craze aya tha. So like aisa tha ki uh, this CDS and BSE ka growth ekdam secular trend pe chalne wala hai. Or phir koi listed player nahi hai, NSE listed nahi hai, NSJ listed nahi hai. So iske se they were this business is posted to egregious valuations. Now we are not saying that the valuation is wrong or wrong. But we have a quick comparison to the stock. In here. So what we are trying to say is that the chance is that the industry is good and we have a company in the sector. Mein. So we can, if we have a decent valuation, then the chance of earnings growth and the valuation relating to the positive. Mil sakta hai. 
So that is one thing. So uske basis mein we would like to cover SGS Enterprise, the only listed player in decorative aesthetics industry. Just a second. Yeah. So if we see, it has an operational history of close to 30 years. So again, confidence will take last 30 years. So we are working on it. We have scaled it to 1500 crores. Again, three no business is scale same. 1500 crores is. So and valuations are also in very similar range. So market is giving an opportunity to study all three businesses who are a little different in each aspect. In each aspect. So it's good. So started as SGS Enterprise, and the key event that one should notice. During 2015, Evergrass Enterprise, that is one P fund, they acquired the majority stake in this business. Now this was acquired because its existing partners were retiring. So its its promoter is K A Joseph. He is still currently part of this business. And uske lava, SJ uh, Evergraph ne inka majority stake liya tha. Then in 2021 me inka IPO hua. And inka 2021 me inne Exotech Plastics again. One word of caution in Abme in Kibo Tarif Karunga is segment key, but this is again a related party. It was a subsidiary and they have acquired this subsidiary. So one should keep that in mind. So these two are one of the key events that happened. And yeah, they have they have started a new manufacturing facility for IMD and IML parts. So one key thing that I will like to cover that further in other slides. So what is this industry, aesthetic industry? So basically, if one will buy a new car, so one will imagine that the bar ka structure is very nice, but under kiti under kiti features are there. So we'll, if one one will go to a new buy a new car, they have one very big screen. Suppose they don't have any or normal dial showing that speed is increasing from this much. They will have digital dial, and I have seen one car where even in dial they have cameras, so one can see. But what I'm trying to highlight is. Nowadays, an interior of car is of as much importance as its outer uh, outer appearance. So, a lot of developments are happening in interior of the car, and one industry that benefits the most from this trend is aesthetics industry. So, this industry caters to lots of industries like OEMs, kitchen appliances, consumer durables, commercial appliances, and many more. But this business is primarily focused on. OEMs business and although com, uh, consumer durable they are starting to gain a lot of traction, but currently OEMs contribute the majority of the revenues. So that is why we have covered this like this company in our to overall presentation because it is basically coverage of three auto industries that we find interesting. So this industry is like, why do we find this industry um, exciting? So as per the DRSP of SGS Enterprise. Crisil expects this industry to grow at 20% for the next five years. So now, how did they come up with this number? So basically, because of the down cycle that we have experienced in OEMs, they expect that OEMs to grow at 15% again next five years. And in general, consumer durables is a much more what should I say secular growth industry. And also they expect it 10 to 12% growth. So basically, 12 to 15% to inka end user industry se growth aega. plus. Now, I have talked about the premiumization in all industries, so this premiumization is the most benefit of premiumization in Inc. Because they expect that in almost every product, the premiumization is showing the trend. So they expect that the premiumization trend plus end user industry will aid that 20% of growth can come. Management also says that 25% can come, but we want to be nimble footed and see that 20% is highly likely in the next five years, if industry turns out the way we expect. So if one sees industry overview, so again, two wheelers. This is OEM breakup, huh? OEM and also breakup. So two wheeler contributes fifty percent. Passenger vehicles is thirty seven percent, and again, consumer vehicles, consumer vehicles currently only ten percent. But shift is happening. Why? Because there is certain thing called chrome plating. So if one will go to buy a new refrigerator, one will observe that unke handle me chrome plating hota hai. Washing machine may be chrome plating and like so as the new appliances are my aesthetics ka component is increasing even in consumer durables. So this pie can shift further. But what we are trying to say is primarily is industry ka growth aata hai from OEMs and consumer durables also has some contribution towards this. One sec. Yeah. And if we go towards breakup of this 
aesthetic industry. So I would like to delve a little deep into this. So decal is 20, 34 to 36 percent contribution. So what I would like to tell a little bit more is the decal ho gaya, this ka contribution is 34 to 36 percent. Logos ho gaya. This logos decal, so major contribution are. This is purely commoditized in nature. And the new are optical plastic ho gaya, overlays ho gaya, applics ho gaya, chrome plated parts ho gaya. This may premiumization ka trend ho sakta hai. So decals and yes of the contribution jo bhi hoga, suppose a aesthetic industry hai, abhi inke listed pair hai nahi mahi paas. But suppose there are five companies and each company ka decal contribution alag alag hai. So one should look for trend ki decal and logos mein contribution overall business ka kam hona chahi. Kyunki this is commoditized. So unko maalum pada ki they are not doing any major value addition to their end customer. So with that in mind, one second. Yeah. So the second key trend in this industry, premiumization. So as I just said, optical plastics. One second. Yeah. Optical plastic and chrome plating are coffee trend are ki inka exposure towards the end user segment is going to increase. And one interesting thing to notice, ab jaise overlays loge, applics loge, dials jaise hamare jo car hoti hai, car mein aage jo dial hota hai jisme hamare speed dikhti hai. Pehle speed ka kya hota tha? Two bhi dial aata tha. Usme वो रेट अप होता था डाउन होता था अभी वो रेट वाला पार्ट ही हट गया अभी सीधा डिजिटल लिखा हुआ आ जाता है कितनी स्पीड है हमारी फिर उसमें कैमरास आ जाते हैं फिर हमारी कोई भी कार लोगे 6 टू 7 लाख की भी कार लोगे नॉट इवन हाई रेंज तो उसमें एक बड़ी सी स्क्रीन होगी जिसमें आप आराम से एक्सेस कर सकते हो डिफरेंट थिंग्स तो ये सब चीजों का ट्रेंड आ रहा है काफी सपोज हमारे मिरर्स हो गए कुछ भी हो गए वो सब में क्रोम प्लेटिंग हो गए हमारे जो डोर्स हो गए उसमें क्रोम प्लेटिंग हो गए तो जो ओवरलेस है वो टच वाले आते हैं पहले नॉर्मल खाली वो दबाने वाले थे तो ये सब में आप इन जनरल खुद का स्टेटल भी करोगे कोई न्यू कार देखोगे तो यू विल ऑब्जर्व कि ये सब चीजें काफी चेंज आ गए जो हमारी बहुत ज्यादा एडवांस आ गई मतलब अंदर इंटीरियर की चीजें तो वो सब में प्रीमियमाइजेशन का ट्रेंड तो आ ही रहा है और सब जो न्यू कार आ रही है उसमें ये सब चीजें आ रही है काफी और मेन चीज ये की तो प्रीमियमाइजेशन का ट्रेंड आ रहा है बट इट इज वेरी हैप्पी बिकॉज जैसे आप 2D टू 3D एप्लीकेशन में शिफ्ट देखोगे 2D टू 3D तो 2 टू 3 टाइम रियलाइजेशन है नॉर्मल टू डिजिटल में 6 टू 8 टाइम रियलाइजेशन है आप प्लेन मोल्डेड होगे तो आईएमडी आईएमएल कंपोनेंट्स अब आईएमडी आईएमएल कंपोनेंट्स होते हैं इट इज बेसिकली अ प्रोसेस ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इट इज बेसिकली अ मच मोर एडवांस वे ऑफ मैन्युफैक्चरिंग इट्स प्रोडक्ट्स सो इनका यूजर्स काफी बढ़ रहा है इनका जैसे जो फिनिशर्स होते हैं वो मच बेटर होते हैं देन ट्रेडिशनल मेथड तो इन कंपोनेंट्स का और फिर जो टच का मैंने अभी बताया इनके सब में शिफ्ट आ रहा है और इनकी रिलेशन है एनीवेयर क्लोज टू टू टाइम्स टू अप टू 6 टू 8 टाइम्स तो ये प्रीमियम का जैसे ट्रेंड आएगा अगर एंड यूजर इंडस्ट्री में समझ सपोज इफ यू इमेजिन कि 20% के छोड़ो 0% पे ग्रो हो रही है बट इवन इफ इनके रियलाइजेशन जो है न्यू प्रोडक्ट्स के 2 टू 3 टाइम्स अपवर्ड्स ग्रो हो रहे तो खाली प्रीमियमाइजेशन के थ्रू ही इनका ग्रोथ काफी हो सकता है इवन दो अगर इंडस्ट्री में ग्रोथ रेट नहीं आए और जो हम आगे देखेंगे इनके परफॉर्मेंस बताते हैं हमको या हां लाइक आई मेंशन अब डीकैल ग्राफिक्स एंड लोगो से इट इज प्योरली कमोडिटाइज्ड इन नेचर और ये इंडस्ट्री का एक ये पॉइंट है कि इनके मार्जिन आप देखोगे सपोज सपोज इफ वन विल डू अ कॉमन सेंस एनालिसिस ऑफ ऑल थ्री कंपोनेंट्स तो वन विल ऑब्जर्व कि ये जो रॉ मटेरियल का कंट्रीब्यूशन है इन एसजीएस एंटरप्राइज इज पोर्शनल 36 टू 37% वर्सेस फीम और लुमेक्स का 63 टू 69% तो ऑन द फेस ऑफ इट इट विल लुक कि वाह कितना अच्छा बिजनेस है मार्जिन काफी अच्छे हैं बट इनकी वर्किंग कैपिटल कैपिटल वर्किंग कैपिटल साइकिल इज मच लॉन्गर लाइक फीम एंड लुमेक्स आर एनीवेयर क्लोज टू 15 टू 20 डेज है तो इनका 120 डेज तक जाता है तो इनकी गलती नहीं कि इंडस्ट्री कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ही ऐसा है कि हाई वर्किंग कैपिटल साइकिल होता है इनकी इंडस्ट्री में एंड सिक्लिकल तो है ही क्योंकि ओएमएस को कंट्रीब्यूट करता है प्लस इनके जो रॉ मटेरियल होते हैं उसका कंट्रीब्यूशन इज क्लोज टू 35% ऑफ टोटल कॉस्ट और इनके रॉ मटेरियल थोड़े वोलेटाइल इन नेचर जैसे पीवीसी हो गया जो मतलब पेट्रोल से रेट वेरी करता है और इस इंडस्ट्री में इन जनरल देखा है तो प्राइसिंग पावर नहीं है तो विद दैट इन माइंड आई विल लेट यू गो फॉरवर्ड अब स्ट्रेंथ्स में जाते हैं मैंने काफी कवर कर लिया स्ट्रेंथ बट मैं आई वाज टॉकिंग मोर अबाउट इंडस्ट्री पर्सपेक्टिव से कि इंडस्ट्री हमको इतनी इंटरेस्टिंग लगती है इंडस्ट्री में इतनी स्ट्रेंथ है एंड दिस इज द ओनली लिस्टेड प्लेयर तो इनके क्या स्ट्रेंथ है इन द होल इंडस्ट्री तो मार्केट लीडरशिप विद वाइड प्रोडक्ट प्रोफाइल तो इनका प्रेजेंस है अक्रॉस एंटायर प्रोडक्ट लाइंस इसलिए हम कह रहे हैं कि इनका मार्केट लीडरशिप है बट अगेन ये तो ओनली लिस्टेड प्लेयर है तो हाउ डू वी नो कि इनका मार्केट लीडरशिप है इनका प्रोडक्ट प्रोफाइल वाइड है तो the best source to know about any company जिनका भी IPO हो रहा है list होने वाले that is DRSP 
तो वन वे स्टडी डी आर एस पी डिटेल में तो पिक्चर वे स्पीक इट सेल्फ फाइन द आउट बनाओ चलो इसमें बात करिए डिफरेंट प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट्स ये ट्रेडिशनल सेगमेंट्स है दिस आर एडवांस प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट्स शायद आई जस्ट मतलब टोल्ड की लोगों से थ्री डी लोगों में मतलब टू डी डायल से थ्री डी डायल्स में जिसमें टू टाइम्स मतलब वो रिवेन्यू रियलाइजेशन है फिर ऑप्टिकल प्लास्टिक में आ रहे हैं फ्रॉम ट्रेडिशनल प्लास्टिक जिसमें सिक्स टाइम्स रियलाइजेशन है तो ये जो साइड पे है बेसिकली हम ऐसे रूल ऑफ ऐसे समझ सकते हैं कि जो भी ट्रेडिशनल में दिया हुआ है एडवांस में या उसमें सेम चीज का टू टाइप्स में मिनिमम है रियलाइजेशन तो आइडली अगर हमको कोई इंडस्ट्री का देखना है प्लेट चूज करना है तो वी वुल लाइक ना कि जिसका एडवांस में शिफ्ट आ रहा है और एडवांस में रिलेशन ज्यादा है तो उसमें उसका ज्यादा प्रेजेंस हो बट प्रेजेंस होना इस बन थिंग प्रोडक्शन करने इज अलग थिंग क्योंकि एडवांस में प्रोडक्ट करने प्रोडक्शन करने में काफी आर एंड डी लगता है एंड नॉट एवरी वन कैन प्रोड्यूस हमको कैसे मान लो इसमें आर एंड डी इतना लगता है बिकॉज इफ वन विल सी इनके दस लिस्टेड प्लेयर है तो ओनली फीम इज ही इज एविंग प्रेजेंस अक्रॉस द एडवांस प्रोजेक्ट प्रोडक्ट्स इनका हर चीज है प्रेजेंस है नो वन हैज प्रेजेंस अक्रॉस ऑल थिंग्स तो अगर आज मैं ओ ई एम हूँ आज मैंने देख लिया कि इनका स्केल आगे स्केल की हम बात करेंगे हमको दिखा इनका स्केल अच्छा है इनका हर प्रोडक्ट सेगमेंट में मतलब प्रेजेंस है और इनका आर एन डी सेगमेंट है इसमें न्यू न्यू प्रोडक्ट डेवलप करता है हमको दिख रहा है क्योंकि हर एडवांस टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोडक्ट में इनका प्रेजेंस है बाकी सबका नहीं है तो इट्स बट ऑब्वियस मैं नॉट ओनली उनको बिजनेस दूंगा अपना बट मैं अपना वॉलेट शेयर अगर किसी और को दिया हुआ है तो वो वॉलेट से भी मैं इनको दे दूंगा एस जी एस को तो इनका एग्जिस्टिंग वॉलेट से भी इंक्रीज हो सकता है तो इनका वन थिंग तो ये है कि इनका एक तो मार्केट लीडरशिप है प्लस इनका प्रोडक्ट लाइन बहुत अच्छा है सर कंपेरिटिवली टू इट्स पीएस सॉरी सॉरी आई थिंक आई वेंट विद फॉर मी हां एंड इट्स प्रोडक्ट पोर्टफोलियो इज वेरी राइट इसमें सब फोटो से मैं कह रहा था ओवरलेस हो गया जो हमारे ये कंज्यूमर ड्यूरेबल भी यूज होते हैं फिर लोगोस हो गए इन मोल लेबलिंग हो गई स्क्रीन्स हो गए आई वांट डेल डीप इनटू दिस बट इसमें ये सब चीजें मैं ऑप्टिकल प्लास्टिक का कह रहा था ये सब भी हमारे कार्स में यूज होते हैं तो ये सब तो चीजें आजकल काफी ज्यादा इनकी डिमांड बढ़ रही है और यूजर्स काफी ज्यादा बढ़ रहे हैं अब न्यू कार में जाओगे तो हर न्यू कार में फिर इट्स नॉट जस्ट अबाउट क्या बहुत एक्सपेंसिव रेंज में कार लोगे आप नॉर्मल रेंज में कार लोगे तो आजकल ये सब चीजें नेसेसिटी हो रही है क्योंकि ओएफ्स पहले जितना एक्सटीरियर को वैल्यूशन मतलब देती थी वैल्यू उतना इंटीरियर साइड को भी दे रही वैल्यू तो हाउ डू दे डिफ्रेंशिएट विद देयर कंपटीटर्स तो इनको बट ऑब्वियस ये सब चीज लानी पड़ रही इंटीरियर में सो दैट इज वन थिंग एंड अगर हम रेवेन्यू स्ट्रीम देखें अभी हमने इंडस्ट्री की तो बात कर ली थी पर हम इनका दे ये तो वी विल ऑब्जर्व कि इनका जो टू व्हीलर सेगमेंट में था इनका डिपेंडेंस इनमें रिड्यूस हो रहा है पहले 60 परसेंट था आज 50 परसेंट पर आ चुका है और इनका जो कंज्यूमर ड्यूरेबल बिजनेस वो काफी अच्छा स्केलअप हो रहा है पहले 23 परसेंट था और अभी 28 परसेंट हो गया और अभी ये लोग एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं कि और ग्रो होगा बिकॉज ऑफ न्यू ऑर्डर डील विंस विद अलॉडियो वर्लपूल एंड मेनी बोर ग्लोबली एस्टेब्लिश प्लेयर्स इन एक्सपोर्ट मार्केट वो हम आगे बात करेंगे बट बेसिकली इनका ये सेगमेंट है तो अगेन इनका ओ से कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन आ रहा है अच्छा बट इट इट इज नॉट Completely an OEM dependent company. In the consumer durable से काफी अच्छा revenue contribution आ रहा है सर. So that makes it revenue model a little bit more robust. Yeah, second is well established customer base. अभी again इनका एक board of caution इनके last इनके कोई long term contracts नहीं होते किसी कौन मतलब supplier से. तो ideally किसी और काफी companies में से होता है कि किसी में long term supplier contracts नहीं होते. तो हाउ डू वी जज कि इनके स्विचिंग कॉस्ट हाई है या नहीं है या फिर इनके रिलेशनशिप स्ट्रॉन्ग है या नहीं है तो अगर हम देखेंगे ये लोग ऑलरेडी थर्टी ईयर से प्रेजेंस है इनका बिजनेस में दे आर कॉन्स्टेंटली प्रोवाइडिंग वैल्यू एडिशन प्लस इनके जो इनके की जो कस्टमर्स है जिनका लास्ट टॉप फाइव एंड टेन कस्टमर्स है उनका बिजनेस इनका लास्ट टेन टू फिफ्टीन ईयर से दे हैव बिन डूइंग दिस बिजनेस विद दैम सो दैट लेंड्स क्रेडिबिलिटी इनका इनका कस्टमर बेस काफी सॉलिड है प्लस देर मस्ट भी सच स्विचिंग कॉस्ट बिकॉज दे आर एबल टू प्रोवाइड वैल्यू एडिशन अक्रॉस द वैल्यू चेन ऐसे कोई प्रोडक्ट ही नहीं है दैट दे डोंट प्रोवाइड सो दैट क्रिएट सम हाई स्विचिंग कॉस्ट एंड आल्सो आफ्टर द एक्विजिशन ऑफ एक्सोटेक सो बेसिकली व्हाट एक्सोटेक डज इज इट इज प्राइमरीली इन्वॉल्व्ड इन क्रोम प्लेटिंग बिजनेस सो आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू कि सपोज हम कोई डोर देखते हैं कोई रेफ्रिजरेटर का तो उसमें हम देखते हैं कि क्रोम प्लेटिंग आ रही है तो हर कंज्यूमर ड्यूरेबल्स में आजकल क्रोम प्लेटिंग का कंट्रीब्यूशन काफी इंक्रीज हो रहा है तो व्हाट मैनेजमेंट सो कि हम क्रोम प्लेटिंग का डिमांड बढ़ रहा है काफी क्रोम प्लेटिंग का भी जो मार्केट है इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू ग्रो एट एटीन परसेंट फॉर नेक्स्ट फाइव इयर्स तो दे सॉ कि हम
तो वी कैन क्रॉस सेल टू इट टू आर एक्सिस्टिंग ओ एम कस्टमर्स क्योंकि क्रोम रेटिंग की डिमांड तुमको आई रही है कस्टमर्स को तो अगर हम खुद ही सप्लाई कर देते हम ऑडिटिंग को दूसरे प्रोडक्ट की सप्लाई कर ही देते हैं तो इसके वजह से इनका ये जो एस्टेब्लिश कस्टमर बेस है नॉट ओनली इंश्योर कि इनका प्रोडक्ट प्रोफाइल या रेवेन्यू स्ट्रीम कंसिस्टेंट रहेगा कि इनके प्रोडक्ट मतलब कस्टमर बेस काफी सॉलिड है बट ऑल्सो इनके जो दूसरा बिजनेस है उससे ये लोग क्रॉस सेल कर सकते हैं और इनके इतने सारे प्रोडक्ट लाइन है तो ये हर प्रोडक्ट एक कस्टमर को सपोज एक कोई प्रोडक्ट दे रहे तो ये बोल सकते हैं कि हम ये प्रोडक्ट आपको और कस्टम कॉस्ट कम्पेटेटिवली दे दे कि हमारा स्केल इतना अच्छा है तो ये हर कंपनी में अपना वॉलेट शेयर इंक्रीज कर सकते हैं थ्रू क्रॉस सेलिंग तो दैट इज वन मेजर ट्रेंड दैट कैन प्ले आउट इन दिस बिजनेस और अभी प्ले आउट करे लास्ट फाइव ईयर में और आगे भी प्ले आउट कर सकते हैं तो जैसे हम देखेंगे इनका भरपूर बिजनेस जो है इन्हें भी लास्ट वन टू ईयर्स में अक्वायर करा था और फ्रॉम फॉरन का बिजनेस भी अक्वायर कर लेंगे अभी रिसेंटली साथ में इनका जो एक्सोडेक का बिजनेस था वो इनने इनरोड्स कर लिए टूवर्ड्स वर्लपूल फैसिलिटी तो पहले इनका जो नॉर्मल स्टैंडर्ड ऑन बिजनेस था दैट ओनली यूज टू कंट्रीब्यूट टूवर्ड्स देयर वर्लपूल बिजनेस पर फर्स्ट टाइम इनका जो एक्सोडेक वाला बिजनेस है क्रोम रेटिंग का क्रॉस सेल करने की वजह से नाउ दे कैन शेयर देयर क्रोम रिलेटेड पार्ट्स थ्रू वर्लपूल आल्सो तो आगे दे एक्सपेक्ट कि इसके ये जो सिनर्जीज और इंक्रीज हो गया सो तो इसके बेनिफिट आ सकते हैं आज बन के सी के ऑटो एम्स में देखिए तो होंडा महिंद्रा वॉल्वो सुजुकी ऑल मेजर कस्टमर आर देयर कंज्यूमर ड्यूरेबल्स में वर्लपूल सैमसंग गोदरेज ऑल मेजर कंज्यूमर एंड दे सेड स्लाइड में इन्वेस्ट दिस साइड इज इन पिकड अप फ्रॉम इन्वेस्टर प्रेजेंटेशन इफ एनीवन वांट्स टू नो एंड रिलेशंस इनके लास्ट 10 लार्जेस्ट कस्टमर से 10 टू 15 इयर्स से इनका जो आरएनडी फैसिलिटी है इन लोग एक और वन मोर इंपोर्टेंट थिंग अबाउट दिस बिजनेस व्हिच आई माइट कवर लेटर बट इट्स बेटर दैट आई कवर नाउ ओनली दिस दे आर एन एंड टू एंड सप्लायर सो व्हाट दिस मींस दैट दे आर इन्वॉल्व राइट फ्रॉम प्रोडक्ट डेवलपमेंट स्टेज टिल सप्लाइंग देम सो वन विल थिंक कि सपोज सुजुकी इज इंडियाज लार्जेस्ट सप्लायर मतलब प्रोडक्शन प्रोडक्शन हाउस तो ये सब काम वो खुद करते होंगे बट एस जे एस इज इन्वॉल्व एट एवरी स्टेज विद सुजुकी फॉर प्रोवाइडिंग दैट सप्लाईज फॉर द रेस्टोरेंट कंपोनेंट एंड इफ सुजुकी इज इन्वॉल्विंग दैन टूवर्ड्स प्रोडक्शन स्टेज ऑल्सो लाइक डेवलपमेंट स्टेज ऑल्सो दैट शोज कि इनका आर एन ई डिपार्टमेंट कितना रोबस्ट होगा एंड इनका एक स्पेसिफिक बैंगलोर में फैसिलिटी है इनके प्लांट के साथ साथ जहाँ पे आर एन डी डिपार्टमेंट का काम करते हैं एंड वॉट आई मेन फ्रॉम एंड टू एंड इज कोई सपोज न्यू कंपनी है जिनको एसेटिक्स का चाहिए सप्लाई तो ये लोग स्टार्टिंग से लेकर एंड तक वो प्रोडक्ट डेवलप करके देते हैं उनको और इनका जस्ट इन टाइम डिलीवरी मेकेजम है जिससे एंश्योर होता है कि कोई इनका दूसरा जो इनके छह वेयर हाउसेज है पूरे कंट्री में तो इसलिए एंश्योर करते हैं कि कोई कस्टमर इनका इनको छोड़ेगा ही नहीं क्योंकि ये लोग एक तो कॉस्ट कम्पेटिवली दे सकते हैं आर करके दे रहे हैं आपको साथ में दे कैन डिलीवर यू वेरी क्विकली बिकॉज ऑफ वेयर हाउसेज एंड मतलब इनके जो दो प्लांट है जस्ट इन डेट डिलीवरी कर सकते हैं तो उसके से इनका जो कस्टमर बेस है काफी रोबस्ट भी है और आगे भी इट इज एक्सपेक्टेड ये अच्छा रहेगा और प्लस क्रॉस सेलिंग अपॉर्चुनिटी ऑब्वियसली है तो दैट एड्स टू दैट बिजनेस फिर थर्ड ट्रेंड इज ऑफ प्रीमाइजेशन अब प्रीमाइजेशन इज कमिंग ऑन टू फ्रेंड्स फर्स्ट इज एक्सपोर्ट्स एंड सेकेंड इज नॉर्मल जो इनका प्रीमाइजेशन फ्रॉम प्रोडक्ट टू प्रोडक्ट तो मैंने ऐसा भी बताया आर एन डी इंटेंसिव जो प्रोडक्ट्स है उसमें इनका काफी प्रीमाइजेशन हो रहा है शिफ्ट आ रहा है सर और सेकेंडली इफ वी कैन कवर हेयर जैसे डीकेल का आई सेट बिफोर कि ये प्रॉपर कमोडिटाइज प्रोडक्ट है बट इफ वन विल सी इनका थर्टी फाइव पॉइंट एट परसेंट से मतलब फोर्टी नाइन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट से सीधा शिफ्ट आ गए थर्टी फाइव पॉइंट एट परसेंट तो इफ वन विल सी इनका जो प्रॉपर जैसे जो ट्वेंटी फोर परसेंट था अभी एटीन परसेंट आ गया इनके जो भी मतलब कमोडिटाइज प्रोडक्ट्स थे उसका ट्रेंड इज डिक्रीजिंग इन दैट टोटल रिवेन्यू मिक्स तो इसके से इनके रिवेन्यू मिक्स जैसे आप लास्ट थ्री चार साल की परफॉर्मेंस देखोगे तो इवन द ऑटो सेगमेंट एस परफॉर्म टेरिबली स्टिल इनके रिवेन्यू ग्रोथ तो आ रहा है इनका प्रॉफिट ग्रोथ और अच्छा आ रहा है बिकॉज ऑफ दिस प्रीमाइजेशन का ट्रेंड बिकॉज इनका प्रोडक्ट मिक्स ही चेंज हो जा रहा है और साथ में इनका कंज्यूमर ड्यूरेबल्स का सेगमेंट का रिवेन्यू ग्रोथ बढ़ गया जिसके से दे वेर रिलेटिवली शील्डेड फ्रॉम एडवर्स इफेक्ट्स ऑफ ओ ई एम शटडाउन तो प्रीमाइजेशन का इधर ट्रेंड आ रहा है और सेकेंडली इफ वन फॉलोअर्स बिजनेस इंटेंटली तो हमेशा कोई भी इंडियन सप्लायर होगा उसका एक्सपोर्ट में मार्जिन आर कम्पेटिवली हायर बस इज वॉट दे सप्लाई डोमेस्टिकली बट अगेन इनका ये लोग अभी इनका लास्ट टू ईयर्स या थ्री ईयर्स पहले इनका कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन था अबाउट टेन ईयर्स टेन परसेंट अभी इनका करंट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन स्टैंडर्ड सेवेंटीन पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट एंड ऑल दो ये लोग कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट करते हैं टूवर्ड्स
तो हाउ विल दे चूज की हमको यूरोप से सोर्स करना है अमेरिका से सोर्स करना है या इंडिया से सोर्स करना है सो वॉट डि परसीव इज की यूरोप या अमेरिका की जो क्वालिटी होगी इट विल बी बेटर देन इंडिया ऐसा दे परसीव सपोज बट इवन इफ इंडिया इज एबल टू प्रोवाइड द सेम प्रोडक्ट एट लेस देन टेन परसेंट कॉस्ट देन दे माइट सोर्स फ्रॉम इंडिया सो वॉट दे से वी बिलीव दैट आर क्वालिटी इज एट पार विद अदर कंपनीज एंड आर कॉस्ट आर मच मच लेसर देन टेन परसेंट डिफरेंस सो दे एक्सपेक्ट की सपोज वो सौ रुपए में दे तो वी कैन इजिली सोर्स एट सेवेंटी एटी रुपीज नॉट इवन नाइनटी रुपीज सो इसके से दे एक्सपेक्ट और दे आर मेकिंग इन रोड जैसे दे वॉन द बिजनेस ऑफ वर्कफुल ग्लोबल अलोडियन दैट इट इज अ बिग कंपनी इन लैटिन अमेरिका उनका दे बॉर्न बिजनेस तो ये सब बिजनेस बीन से दे एक्सपेक्ट की एक्सपोर्ट का ग्रोथ आगे अच्छा आ पाएगा एंड वन की एक्सपेक्ट दैट वन इज टू अंडरस्टैंड इज दिस दिस इंडस्ट्री ओवरऑल इज नॉट वेरी कैपिटल इंटेंसिव तो आज सपोज दे हैव अ प्लांट इन मैंगलोरी जिसके यूटिलाइजेशन रेट खाली फिफ्टी परसेंट है तो अभी वो खाली वो प्लांट से अक्रॉस द ग्लोब में सप्लाई कर सकते हैं सेम उनको हर जगह जाके प्लांट सेटअप करने की नीड ही नहीं क्यों क्योंकि एस्थेटिक्स का जो वेट होता है वो काफी कम होता है तो उसके से वो हर जगह उनका मूवमेंट बहुत स्लीकली कर सकते हैं सर तो उनको आगे कहीं पे भी ग्रोथ करना है तो उनको कुछ अलग से कैपेसिटी एक्सपांशन करने की उतनी नीड नहीं बढ़ेगी तो डैट इज वन मेजर बेनिफिट दैट इज बिजनेस हैज एंड आल्सो या समवन मेंशन चाइना प्लस वन तो या इन दिस रिसेंट कॉल्ड कॉल दे मेंशन की चाइना प्लस वन जो बेनिफिट था उसका इनको काफी ज्यादा हो बिकॉज एक तो मेजरली पहले उधर से कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन आता था तो उसके से नॉट ओनली इंडिया का बिजनेस इनको मिल गया बट इनका एक्सपोर्ट का रेवेन्यू भी काफी अच्छा है उसके से भी इनका एक्सपोर्ट का बिजनेस काफी स्पीड अप हो गया से तो दे मेंशन इन द रीसेंट कॉन कॉल सो दिस आर ऑल लॉन्ग टर्म ट्रेंड्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ एक्सपोर्ट कंट्रीब्यूशन इंक्रीजिंग टू वर्ड ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट एंड एक्सपोर्ट में मार्जिन ऑब्वियसली ज्यादा होते हैं तो एंटर एंटर इनका एबिटा मार्जिन विल अल्टीमेटली इंक्रीज एंड इफ वन सीज देर अबिलिटी टू सर्विस डिमांड सो एज आई सेट की अभी ट्वेंटी परसेंट से नेक्स्ट फाइव ईयर में ग्रोथ आने वाले बट हाउ विल सर्विस इज डिमांड That is one key aspect. The, are they having any facilities ready to service the demand? So they have six facilities in India, and inka jo facility hai, wo it is very fungible. Wo same facility me apne koi bhi product produce kar sakte hai. Inka jo Bangalore plant hai, usme they have their R&D unit. So jaldi se R&D unit ka karke they can easily start development stage jaldi. And six, since they have six warehouses across the country, so kahi bhi jaake easily supply kar sakte hai. And inki global strategy bhi yehi hai. Suppose humko export ka bahut jada business scale up hoga. So we will set up customer interfacing uh, outlets. मतलब हम produce इधर से करेंगे, but direct customer से तो बात कर पाए ऐसा outlets हम उधर कर देंगे, जिससे basically उनके retail outlets जगह global scenario में. तो उसके साथ कुछ तो capex करने की तो need नहीं पड़ेगी, but still इन्हें जो exotech का acquisition करा था, in that the Chrome business is scaling up much faster than they expected. इसकी वजह से they are slating to do capex of hundred CR for the next two years. जिसमें 50 50 इयर्स, करोड़ वुड बी इन दिस ईयर एंड 50 करोड़ इन नेक्स्ट ईयर तो दैट हैज रिवेन्यू पोटेंशियल ऑफ 170 करोड़ सो एस आई सेड अगेन इसके एबिटा मार्जिन आर मच हायर बट देन एसेट टर्न ओवर आर मच लोअर तो वन नीड्स टू बी कॉन्शियस ऑफ देयर फैक्ट सो दे आर डूइंग केपेक्स इन दैट फ्रंट एंड अदर देन दैट इफ यू विल सी वन विल थिंक की अच्छा पर अभी तो इंडस्ट्री में ग्रोथ आना स्टार्ट हो रहा है तभी इनके और भी केपेक्स क्यों नहीं कर रहे तो इस वन वील सी वन सेकेंड इनने तो रिसेंटली केपेक्स करा था जब आउटर साइकिल डाउन में थी टू थाउजेंड एटीन नाइनटीन में तो उसके साथ भी इनकी काफी कैपेसिटी ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल है और एंड रिजल्ट इज इनके दो प्लांट्स हैं बैंगलोर में और पुणे में अगेन दिस इज फ्रॉम डी आर एस पी सो इफ वन वील सी इनके एवरेज यूटिलाइजेशन डेट्स हम देखे थे हर सेगमेंट में क्लोज टू दर टोटल यूटिलाइजेशन डेट देखे तो फोर्टी फोर परसेंट जितना ही है और पुणे में फिफ्टी टू परसेंट ही और इनका करंट कॉन्ट्रोल इफ यू विल चेक तो वो अभी भी बोल रहे हैं कि 50 परसेंट इतना ही हमारा करंट यूटिलाइजेशन डेट है तो इनका काफी स्कोप है कि बिना एक्सपेक्ट मतलब कैपेसिटी बढ़ाए भी आराम से सर्विस कर सकते डिमांड तो कैपेसिटी इज नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर दिस बिजनेस लाइट वेट ऑफ एसेटिक्स है तो ट्रांसपोर्ट इजी होता है देन आर एन डी एंड इनोवेशन है सो वॉट दे आर डूइंग इज नो अगेन दिस कंपनीज आर नॉट इंकरिंग लॉट इन टर्म्स ऑफ आर एन डी यूनिट कुछ दो से फाइव करोड़ टू टू फाइव करोड़ दे मस्ट बी इनकरिंग पर ईयर एंड सिंस वी डोंट हैव अ लॉट ऑफ ऑपरेशनल हिस्ट्री अबाउट दिस कंपनी एंड ओनली वन एनुअल रिपोर्ट सो इट विल बी वेरी अर्ली टू से कि कितना पर ईयर आर एन डी में लोग मंथली केपेक्स कर रहे हैं like, कितना ग्रोथ केपेक्स हो रहा है कितना मेंटेनेंस केपेक्स हो रहा है कितना आर एन डी के थ्रू हो रहा है बट वॉट आई हैव अंडरस्टूड बाई स्टडिंग अबाउट दिस बिजनेस इज फर्स्ट दे आर डेवलपिंग न्यू प्रोडक्ट लाइन्स विच नो अदर कंपिटिटर्स आर डेवलपिंग सो दे मस्ट हैव समीसेंट आर एन डी विदाउट एनी जे बी 
so they must have any decent r and d because of which they are able to churn out this new and new product lines and they are still developing new product lines every quarter they are highlight, highlighting new SQs and currently they are handling more than 6000 SQs. so that is a very big thing it's not developed as a career customer my product to my love r and d which hoga rule to be the products develop kar pare lo so it and i just said maru maru the only case point ye har bade bade customers bhi hote hain unke sath ye development se se involved hota hai jis ke se product development mein matlab study se end tak involved hota hai to validation karta hoga ye tabhi involvement rakhe aur jo bhi new vehicle jaise ola ka business inko mila tha ola electric ka to ye sab jo new oems aa rahe hain ev vehicles jo bhi aa rahe hain they are choosing companies like lumex pm and sjs big pie because they are providing additional value addition to iski wajah se उनको स्टार्टिंग में अगर बिजनेस सेटअप करना है तो ऑलरेडी दे पास उनके पास काफी चीजें है टू थिंक थ्रू तो अगर उनको कहीं से भी एडिशनल हेल्प मिल जा रही है तो वे विल दे विल प्रीफर दैट सप्लायर तो इसलिए ये लोग का आर एंड डी इज वन ऑफ द की टू द बिजनेस एंड आई एम नॉट इवन सेइंग कि ये कॉम्पिटिटिव एडवांटेज है इट इज नेसेसिटी एज आर के जैन सेड इन दैट जे के जैन सेड इन फिल्म्स ऑन कॉल एंड व्हाट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस आर एंड डी दे हैव प्रेजेंस अक्रॉस अ वैल्यू चेन बिकॉज़ ऑफ व्हिच इट गिव्स देम एन एज ओवर इट्स कंपटीटर्स <coughs> then management again i have explained a bit over here that 2015 mein inka acquisition hua tha by evergraph because inka jo baki jo promoters the they wanted to retire so inka jo promoter the k joseph he is still part of the business and he has 15% stake post ipo and baki jo inka business tha evergraph fee tha investor unne apna stake sell kar diya but they still have 35% stake तो अभी टोटल इनका स्टेक है 50 परसेंट इन टोटल बिजनेस एंड दिस फिगर इज शोइंग के जो सेवन संजय था पर एंड सो करेंटली संजय था पर हुज द ग्रुप हेड ऑफ एक्सोटेक सॉरी व्हाट शुड इज एक्सोटेक नहीं वन सेकंड आई फॉरगेट एवरग्राफ इज हेडिंग द बिजनेस बट ही आल्सो बाउंड ही इज आल्सो सपोज्ड टू रिटायर विद इन फ्यू मंथ्स एंड दे आर इन हंट फॉर अ न्यू सीईओ सो इसमें थोड़ा सक्सेशन प्लानिंग का प्रॉब्लम दिखता है हमें ऐसे कंपैटिबिली इन कंपैरिजन टू फीम एंड लुमेक्स क्योंकि ये ये तो प्रोफेशनली मैनेज बिजनेस है दैट इज वन थिंग भाई इनका जो एवरग्राफ के जो थे जिन्होंने अक्वायर करा था वो भी अभी लीव कर रहे हैं ऐसा बिजनेस एंड इनके अभी एंबिशंस बहुत एंबिशियस है कि हम लोग को मतलब जे अभी इनका बिकॉज़ दे हैव 100 करोड़ कैश इन देयर बुक सो दे वांट टू डू जेबी मर्जर एंड एक्विजिशन अक्रॉस द ग्लोब सो बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट दे विल नीड वन गुड मैनेजमेंट बैंडविड्थ टू हैंडल ऑल सच थिंग्स सो दैट इज समथिंग दैट वन नीड्स टू कीप ट्रैक ऑफ अभी ऑपरेशनल हिस्ट्री का मैसेज वी कांट कमेंट अ लॉट अबाउट दैट बट स्टिल दैट टीम एंड लुमेक्स में ये चीज वाज बेटर इन कंपैरिजन टू एसजीएस बिकॉज़ मैनेजमेंट ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड था तो वी कैन बेट ऑन दैट इट इज स्टिल वेरी अर्ली टू बेट एनीथिंग मेजर ऑन दिस बट या स्टोरी लुक्स प्रॉमिसिंग दैट इज व्हाट आई कैन से एक्सक्यूज मी देन की मैट्रिक्स अगेन इन टर्म्स ऑफ कैपिटल एलोकेशन वी विल टॉक अबाउट सो इफ वन सी एमएनए देन अगेन वी कैन सी आई एज आई सेड ever uh, exotech ka they merge merge their entity and it has been a big success because ek to inka if you only see inka revenue growth rate has been close to 50% and inka ebitda margin bhi long growth laaye by 60 bps but again exotech mein one thing one needs to remember is isme margin dikha 12.8% of exotech inka overall business ke margin is 26% ke around so one will think ki inka margin deplete ho raha hai but nahi because exotech ka business aisa hai ki isme asset turn around is much higher in compared to the normal standalone sjs business so ending mein roc will be close to 20% only in this business also then merger and acquisition mein so far they have had a successful turn around of exodus limited but again ki strategy hai ki they want to utilize this cash towards new merger and acquisition and this strategy we are not very confident like they are targeting ki hamara organic mein bhi growth aa jayega 20 25% mein but still merger and acquisition studying a lot of companies we still feel that even if a management having 30 years of experience can make blunders in merger and acquisition so we will always prefer organic growth over inorganic so that is one key thing that one issue look at ki value destructive no again acquisition or merger aage jaake abhi they have not announced any major thing but they are planning to do that then again free cash flow kafi time se generate kar rahe log and use karna ye they are expecting to use that in acquisitions so currently inke paas After doing cash uh, acquisition of Exotec of 64 crores, they still have 100 crores worth of cash in their balance sheet that they mentioned. 
एंड डायवर्सिफिकेशन अभी ये लोग वही प्रोडक्ट लाइन में एक्जिस्टिंग करे आ रहे अभी क्रोम ट्रेडिंग में डायवर्सिफिकेशन करा तो दैट हेज बीन मेजर सक्सेस और अभी इसमें कैपेसिटी भी लोग इंक्रीज कर रहे हैं सो फ्रॉम दैट बी नो की डिमांड फ्रॉम दैट साइड हेज बीन रोबेस्ट एंड लास्ट इज फाइनेंशियल आफ्टर दैन वी कैन हैव क्वेश्चन एक्सक्यूज मी की फाइनेंशियल अगेन इफ यू विल सी दैट आर ओ सी हेज बीन वेरी डिसेंट एंड आर ओ ऑल्सो हेज बीन फार अबोव दर कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल एंड दे हैव बीन कॉन्स्टेंटली जनरेटिंग फ्री कैश फ्लोज इन लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स दैट इन्श्योर्स की मतलब कैश जनरेशन इज वेरी डिसेंट विद दिस बिजनेस इवन आफ्टर हाई टर्न और वर्चुअल सेम वर्किंग कैपिटल साइकिल देन अगेन डेट टी फिट इज नेग्लिजिबल सो अगेन दैट शोज की बैलेंस शीट इज वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग समरी या दिस इज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट लाइट दैट वन कैन फाइंड दिस इज अगेन इन एक्सट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम डी आर एस पी सो अगेन वी डोंट हैव एनी अदर कम्पिटिटर्स टू लुक फॉर लाइक वी कैन जज फीम एंड लुमस कि अच्छा फीम का मार्जिन थोड़ा बेटर है बट लुमस का आफ्टर मार्केट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन बेटर है तो उसका आर ओ सी थोड़ा बेटर होगा बट हाउ टू जज दिस बिजनेस तो उन्हें क्रिजिल ने इंडस्ट्री प्रोफाइल में इनका सब जो बिजनेस थे लिस्टेड पीएस थे अनलिस्टेड पीएस थे उनका सब मेट्रिक्स डाले हुए तो इफ वन विल लुक एट तो इनका ऑपरेटिंग इनकम जो ग्रोथ है लास्ट फाइव ईयर में इवन थ्रू द इंडस्ट्री और द एंड यूजर इंडस्ट्री एस एडी इंडस्ट्री माइट हैव स्टिल ग्रोन बट एंड इंडस्ट्री यूजर इंडस्ट्री इज नॉट ग्रोन अलॉट बट स्टिल इफ यू विल सी लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स में इनका फिफ्टीन परसेंट रिवेन्यू ग्रोथ रेट है इनका एक्सपोर्ट में कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन बाकी सभी कंपेरिजन में काफी ज्यादा है फिफ्टी परसेंट है अभी तो और बढ़ गया इनका ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट टारगेट कर रहे लोग मार्जिन इफ यू सी क्योंकि इनका प्रेजेंस है अक्रॉस एडवांस टेक ऑल्सो लाइक बाकी सबका ट्रेडिशन में आता था कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इनका एडवांस में ज्यादा इसलिए इनका मार्जिन आर मच हायर देन अदर कंपेटर्स तो इसका हमको प्रूफ मिल जाता है मतलब एबिटा मार्जिन देख के पैट मार्जिन ऑल्सो वेरी रीजनेबल मच हायर देन दियर्स देन आर ओ इफ वन विल सी आर ओ सी आर ओ इट इज ऑल्सो मच बेटर देन पियर्स एंड कॉस्ट ऑफ कैपिटल से काफी बेटर है एंड अगेन नो लेवरेज इन इट्स बैलेंस शीट फाइनेंशियल लेवरेज एट एंड टॉकिंग मोर सो दैट शोज की मतलब इन टर्म्स ऑफ इंडस्ट्री में अगर प्लेयर लिस्टेड भी होते तो भी वन माइट है एस जे एस टू बी मच बेटर देन अदर प्लेयर्स एंड इट इज अमॉन्ग टॉप थ्री प्लेयर्स अगर हम रिवेन्यू मिक्स में भी देखते हैं सर सो या दैट कंक्लूज माई ओके वेट एंटी थीज आर लेफ्ट सो दिस वॉल ऑल वेरी पॉजिटिव आई वुड लाइक टू टॉक एंटी थीज तो एक तो इनका कंस्टमर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन इज मच है इन कंपेरिजन टू फीम एंड लू मिक्स सो टॉप टेन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट क्लोज टू एटी फाइव परसेंट एंड टॉप फाइव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट क्लोज टू सिक्सटी परसेंट सो दैट इज अ लॉट फिर अभी डीकेल एंड ऑल स्टिल कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट क्लोज टू फोर्टी टू फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल प्रोडक्ट मतलब रिवेन्यू मिक्स तो अभी भी थोड़ा पोर्शन कमोडिटाइज है तो दैट इज वन थिंग इनकी बुकिंग कैपिटल साइकिल अगेन बहुत ज्यादा लंबी है तो देर कैन बी समेरियन बिटवीन सी एफ ओ एंड पैट दैट वन टू बी लुक वन नीड्स टू लुक एट देन अगेन कोई लॉन्ग टर्म अरेंजमेंट नहीं है इनके सप्लाई के साथ तो इनका जैसा अभी ने अपने इन्वेस्टर प्रेजेंटेशन में डालते कि नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ इनकी जो रिवेन्यू है आगे वो इन लोग अभी करंट ऑर्डर बुक में डाली हुई है तो दे वेर हाईलाइटिंग इट इज ए पॉजिटिव कि हमारी इतनी रिवेन्यू मतलब इतना विजिबल है हमारी प्रूफ फ्यूचर रिवेन्यू प्रोफाइल बट दैट इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन विनिंग न्यू कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ना अभी हम अगले दिन अगले साल का चलो फोकास्ट कर सकते कि दिस ईयर बी गॉट दिस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट तो अगले साल नाइनटी परसेंट सपोज होगा बट वॉट नेक्स्ट सो दैट इज वन थिंग दैट वन यू शुड लुक एट कि लॉन्ग टर्म अरेंजमेंट होने से अगर इतने अच्छा प्लेयर है तो तो दैट थिंग्स डजेंट शिट वेल्थ विथ अस दैट वॉट वी आर सॉन वी हैव सीन की जो रियलाइजेशन डेट्स है एडवांस प्रोडक्ट्स में आर टू टू सिक्स टाइम्स क्लोज टू फ्रॉम नॉर्मल नॉर्मल ट्रेडिशन इनके वो प्रोडक्ट्स थे बट वॉट इफ इनके प्लेयर्स जो है दूसरे प्लेयर्स जैसे इनके दो प्लेयर इनसे भी बड़े थे एस जी एस से वॉट इफ दे डेवलप दैट दो प्रोडक्ट्स एंड अगर किसी को दिखेगा मार्केट में इतना ज्यादा रियलाइजेशन रेट है मतलब रिवेन्यू रेट है कंपेटिवली तो दे माइट एंड अगर इट्स ईच अदर तो उसके ऐसे जो इनका जो एबिटा मार्जिन को जो दिख रहा है इतना क्या पता वो इनक्रेटेड हो बिकॉज अभी इनके जो कंप्यूटर उनका इतना प्रेजेंस ही नहीं उस फील्ड में इट इज लाइक स्पेशलिटी केमिकल टर्निंग इन टू कम्युनिटी केमिकल वॉट इफ दे गेट प्रेजेंस इन टू दैट फील्ड तो दैट इज वन मेजर रिस्क दैट वी नीड टू लुक एट एंड या सिक्योरिटी इन द एंड बिजनेस सो दीज आर की एंटीबेसिस एंड फ्यूचर कैटरी आई टॉक अबाउट Primarily focus on export market that is grow that market, premiumization towards advanced products, cross selling its product, increasing its consumer durable consumer durable business because अभी currently का twenty five percent जितना आ रहा है they expect कि अभी अगरे वर्पुल ये सब का business grow होगा
विच इज लैटिन अमेरिका की बहुत बिग कंपनी कुछ सेवन एट बिलियन डॉलर वर्थ कंपनी है रिवेन्यू वर्थ कंपनी आई एम बिट कंफ्यूज आई विल चेक एंड टेल तो मतलब उसका भी इनको डील विन मिल गया ऐसा तो दे आर मेकिंग डिसेंट इंड्रोड्स इन वॉट शुड एस कंज्यूमर ड्यूरेबल्स एंड दे आर थिंकिंग अभी जैसे मोबाइल एप्लीक मतलब मोबाइल डेवलपमेंट होता है मतलब फिजिकल मतलब फिजिकल मोबाइल डेवलपमेंट वो सब में भी इनकी कॉम्पिटेंसी हो सकती है तो दे माइट वेंचर इन टू दैट साइड एज वेल सो ऑप्शनैलिटी काफी इस बिजनेस में या आई थिंक वेब प्रोवाइड एवरीथिंग एंड यूज फ्री कैश फ्लो टू फॉर इन ऑर्गेनिक एक्विजिशंस दैट इज वन या थैंक्स ग्रुप आई जस्ट वांटेड टू ऐड टू कॉशन कॉशनरी पॉइंट्स फ्रॉम माय साइड बिफोर वी टेक take up more questions as in uh, everything looks good for sgs but two things which uh, clearly uh, stands out as the risk uh, where we think that we should be very cautious and monitor the situation is number one is they being very 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 aggressive on the mna thing as in they they keep on highlighting that mna part in their con calls also and also in their presentations so it's good that they have the uh, the firepower or the or the the balance sheet strength to go for mna but uh, mna has its own set of risks as dhruv has highlighted that is one and then the second is their uh, extremely uh, positive guidance of organic growth so if you look at their presentation and concourse again you you will see that 20 to 25% to wo log aise bol rahe jaise ki bahut easily ho jayega so that we have to see how easy that is for a company like sgs to achieve and uh, will that growth will be uh, will that growth come from their current set of products or as dhruv mentioned that uh, if if they go into some products which are uh, margin dilutive then it could be a problem for us right so these two uh, negative is something or the cautionary points which we believe that you should keep in mind yeah dhruv you were plus one one is to look at i think that one should First, judge their performance post listing a little bit because not only are they very aggressive, but sometimes it seems more like that because listing price is low, high rate, so they do a little bit excessive selling. Like on the con call, if you ask one question, the MD will answer, his some other peer will answer, and their investor relation manager will answer. This is the first time I'm seeing the investor relation manager is taking active part in con calls. I never, ever experienced this thing before, and they say that our like that growth is likely to come because if you will see mar- her market research report, me, tell me how much growth will come. I mean, you are running the business, so you should be having a better facts, na, rather than just saying that research reports me, show how much growth will come. So, right, 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 right. So I see uh, Avadut raising his hand again. So I'll unmute you. Yeah, please go ahead, Avadut. वो इन्वेस्टर रिलेशन के ऑफिसर को भी याद हो गया रहेगा अभी तक कि कितना बोलना है कितना कहा ग्रोथ रेट बोलना है इसलिए वो भी थोड़ा चिंत करता करता रहेगा दैट अट जस्ट टू टू थिंग्स जस्ट आई वांट टू नो सो इट्स लाइक लो वॉल्यूम बट हाई एसके काइंड ऑफ मॉडल राइट एंड अदर पार्ट दे आर हैविंग एडवांटेज इज लेबर आर्बिट्राज if they want to go for the export market right and why the asset turnover could be low any uh, sense on that because jo uh, the part they are manufacturing is very uh, uh, it could be maybe because of the as you mentioned they don't have a long long term contracts because of that also or the demand side volumes could be low that could be the reason abdul i i have an answer for this uh, why asset turnover are high so i think a very good comparison over here would be uh, bkt as you would have seen in case of bkt also there is low volume high variety or high number of sqs but right. what bkt right. does to maintain its high asset turnover ratio is they don't keep too much inventory with them in fact they their uh, uh, agents or uh, how do i see dealers dealers keep more inventory uh, in their books so that is where bkt has less uh, problem or less stress from the inventory side but that is not the case of sjs in yeah. case of sjs they have to keep a lot of inventory and that is where 
their asset turnover ratio goes down so warehouses uh, could be the another point where, where bkft will be doing it they are keeping it into the warehouses and are uh, distributing okay right. then going further if they uh, expand into other countries and then there there is a chance that the asset turnover ratio can go up right uh i would yeah. not say so immediately because see if you are expanding to another country again you have to build your distributorship and uh, dealership and all so that takes time and that also how strong their uh, their image is or brand branding power is because bkt also took 30 years to build that kind of a thing so i don't think it would be easy for uh, yeah yeah SGS. it takes take time but not immediately it would happen yes 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 understood thank you that's it from us and dhruv congratulations you have spoken for 3 hours it's a marathon session and it's your first presentation you have done a terrific job i didn't thank see you. time also <laughs> thank you thank you so much abdul so uh, we'll we'll move to the next question set of questions from uh, which is there on the uh, chat box so shorya has so shorya uh, has one question related to why they are not catering to hero so hero is not their clients bajaj and all other two wheelers are their clients but hero is not there so any yeah. idea yeah yeah i can tell you so basically wo log two wheelers mein almost sab unke customer hai except hero so they are trying to mind that client also and they said ki hopefully they are in talks and they can get that client in previous conference but in recent conference they didn't mention anything so i don't know the reason why they are able to not do that but they are cognizant of that fact and they are trying that is one thing right so next question is from siddharth he is asking how to assess the r&d uh, efforts and expenses uh, of the company how they are doing and all right so basically i haven't done a lot of research on r&d expenses per, per se but what i was looking at is qualitative aspects so two key things that i could find out was if a company is having it's having players bigger than it and it is still having presence across the value chains which have in products which have higher realization then why would their competitor not take entry into that but they are unable to take that so that is one thing that gives me confidence ki kuch r and d mein kuch hoga tabhi kar pa rahe secondly if some player like maruti unke ka supply karo that is apna aap mein badi deal but unke sath you are involved in manufacturing the product so matlab they must be confident ki aapki kuch development stage mein hota hai then third जैसे ओला इलेक्ट्रिक जैसे ओला इलेक्ट्रिक में बिजनेस में आई एम नॉट इवन कम मतलब आई एम नॉट कमेंटिंग बट इफ सम न्यू अपस्टार्ट ओ एम इज सिलेक्टिंग यू देन वन ऑफ द की क्राइटेरिया दैट इज चूज फॉर सिलेक्टिंग यू इज आप उनको एडिशन क्या दोगे वैल्यू का क्योंकि प्रोडक्ट तो हर कोई प्रोड्यूस कर सकता है और उनको स्टार्टिंग में ये सब चीज की एक्सपर्टीज चाहिए होती है तो सेम केस वाज विद फीम एंड सेम केस इज विद एसजीएस तो दोनों को इस चीज का कांटेक्ट मिला था तो ये लोग वैल्यू एडिशन कर रहे हैं उस सेंस में स्पेशली फॉर न्यू प्लेयर उनको ये एस्टेब्लिश प्लेस के पास ही जाना पड़ेगा एंड दे कैन थिंक इतना प्राइस में फर्क होगा न्यू और आल्सो अगर आप इतना आर एंड की फैसिलिटी दे रहे हो तो अपना आपके मार्जिन यू कैन कमांड बेटर ना बिकॉज आप एडिशनल वैल्यू एडिशन दे रहे हो एंड दे हैव वन सेपरेट यूनिट जैसे इनके खाली दो प्लांट इंडिया में तो भी इनका एक प्लांट में साथ में इन्होंने आर एंड डी का अलग से बनाया हुआ ऐसे तो दे आर फोकस्ड इन टू दैट इज ऑल आई कैन से नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम शौर्य इज ऑन हाउ बिग द चाइना प्लस वन थीम इज फॉर SJS. See, they are not quantifying anything, but I just said it's con, uh, Q1 con call yesterday, and where they mentioned that previously China, these all the aesthetics component were primarily China was one of the biggest player here. But post COVID, just like if we will see, their consumer durables come segment, see suppose, what rapid growth is, 20 percent a big contribution are there. So these all the export the clients are, like Whirlpool or these all, those people's demand is increasing for India. Ke liye jada bad बिकॉज चाइना से इनको थोड़ा प्रिफरेंशियल सप्लायर चाहिए अगेन दे डोंट क्वांटिफाई एनीथिंग हियर कि ये कितना अपॉर्चुनिटी साइज है क्या है बट इन जनरल ऑटोमेटिव कंपोनेंट्स के ऑटो इंसुलेटर्स में चाइना इज वर्ल्ड का वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट प्लेयर वी ऑल नो दैट एंड इफ वी आर मोर कंपेटिटिव कॉस्ट कंपेटिटिव देन यूरोपियन प्लेयर्स एंड चाइना ये लोगों को कुछ प्रीफर्ड सप्लायर चाहिए अदर देन चाइना दे आर सेइंग कि चाइना को छोड़ ही देंगे खाली दूसरी सप्लायर चूज करेंगे बट वी आर बीइंग ऑर्गेनाइज थोड़ा बिजनेस अगर इधर साइड ट्रांसफर करें सब एंड दे आर कॉस्ट कंपेटिटिव वर्सेस द प्लेयर्स तो अपना आप एक्सपोर्ट साइज इनका अपॉर्चुनिटी की ग्रो हो जाएगी सर एंड दे आर गेटिंग एंट्री इनटू न्यू कंट्रीज आल्सो नॉट जस्ट मतलब प्रोडक्ट्स ये सब इनका रीसेंट कॉन्कॉल में दे मेंशन की दे ऑलरेडी है प्रेजेंट इन 
ट्वेल्व कंट्रीज एंड अभी अर्जेंटीना में भी इनको प्रेजेंस मिल गया तो उसमें कैसा ग्रोथ है वो आइडिया नहीं बट एंट्री मिल रही न्यू न्यू कंट्रीज में तो कहीं पे भी वर्क कर जाए चीज तो वो बात है नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम अगेन शौर्य देर आर मेनी अनलिस्टेड प्लेयर इन दिक कॉम्पोनेट सो वाई डोंट वाई डोंट देर इन टू फ्रोम प्लेटिंग पार्ट इफ द total addressable market is huge they might be present i am not denying that chrome plating part was not its existing business that is what i am saying they acquired their group company named exotech from which they started their chrome business and usme pehle they were not incurring any profits and revenue profile was also not good but they realized ki hamare paas 30 years ka experience hai so we can easily turn out ki business with same competency hai aur hum log apne existing jo clients hai whirlpool ho gaya usko aise cross sell kar sakte so apne existing clients ko inke products bech sakte hain तो इसके से अपना मार्जिन बढ़ जाएगा अगर हम ऑलरेडी हमारे भी मतलब सपोज हम 10 प्रोडक्ट सर्विस कर रहे हैं साथ में हम बोल रहे हैं हम क्रोम रेडिंग में आपको साथ में देंगे तो हमारा भी रिलेशन स्ट्रॉगर हो जाएगा तो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट दैट इंटरनेट इन जनरल क्रोम प्लेटिंग इज टाइप ऑफ सेपरेट मार्केट ओनली अदर देन एस्थेटिक्स इंडस्ट्रीज एंड क्रोम प्लेटिंग इज इटसेल्फ एक्सपेक्टेड टू ग्रो एट अगर ऑफ 18 टू 22% इफ आई एम नॉट रॉन्ग सो दैट मार्केट में दे गॉट एन एंट्री and its market size is going to be 1000 crore something india mein and abhi export opportunity ki khul gaye whirlpool mein to that should grow further right so i think the last question is from uh, piyush he asked about any idea on the total addressable market and competitor of uh, competition of sjs competitor as i said two competitors i don't remember the name friendly we can go back and market size is one second if i remember correctly it was 5000 to 6000 crores ka market size domestic mein then export i don't remember i can just fact check again and get back to you if you want abhi as far as top of the mind mujhe 5000 to 6000 yaad aa raha hai so i think there are no more question i don't see any hands being raised or any question on the chat box so dhruv you can yeah, proceed to the next इसमें कैलकुलेट प्लस कर दो मेरे टोटल आ गया सो नाउ मार्सेलस वन सेक मार्सेलस सेकलिस नाउ इट वाज अ वेरी एक्सटेंसिव सेकलिस सो वी ट्राइड कि जितना इंटेंसिव हम कर पाए उतना कहीं ट्राई करें ऐसा तो ही बेसिकली डिवाइडेड इज सेकलिस इनटू अकाउंटिंग रेशियोस बिजनेस टेक एनालिसिस कंपैरेटिव एडवांटेज एनालिसिस एंड ऑल सच थिंग सो वी विल गो वन बाय वन सो फर्स्ट इज अकाउंटिंग रेशियोस सो सीएफओ फ्रॉम एबिटा सो नाउ दीस फिगर्स Might seem low and thoda low heavy, but one needs to be cognizant of the fact that FY22 me or 21 me inki to inventory pile up bhi kafi ho sakta tha due to COVID. In general, thoda working capital cycle kam thi, but ye sab B2 biz businesses hai, to isme thoda problem ho sakta hai CFO to EBITDA. Main humko ye cheez ka cognizant rehna chahiye, kyunki ideally CFO to EBITDA should be closer to 100. And inme ye sab cheeze nahi hai. Result SJ pe fir bhi thoda sun me aata hai kam ho, kyunki unka capital intensity kam hai. and maybe because fim or lumes bhi itta kps one last year kafi years mein so depreciation component itta kam hoga but still this is a major negative then volatility and depreciation so that has been pretty stable then cw ip to gross block as it is these companies have not incurred a major kps in last 5 years so i don't think that would be a valid checkpoint here but the one can keep track of this in future then free cash flow again all these companies are generating free cash flow एसजीएस का भी थोड़ा कम लगेगा फ्री कैश फ्लो बट दैट माइट बी बिकॉज ऑफ दाइस एंड डूइंग एंड ऑल्सो बिकॉज ऑफ जो एक्विजिशन में करा था बट अगेन फ्री तीनों का नहीं फ्री कैश फ्लो पॉजिटिव है सो दैट इज वन गुड थिंग एंड इफ वन डू डू पॉइंट एनालिसिस नॉट दिस इज द इंटरेस्टिंग पार्ट अगर हम कंपेटिव एनालिसिस करेंगे तो इनका एंडिंग में आर ओ सी ऑलमोस्ट तीनों का सिमिलर ही है बट इंटरेस्टिंग दैट वन नीड्स टू लुक एट इज सबके अलग अलग तरीके से रिवेन्यू प्रोफाइल मतलब मार्जिन मतलब आर ओ सी आ रहे हैं जैसे इफ वन विल लुक एट एस जी एस तो एस अब्दुल भैया सेट हाई मार्जिन लो वॉल्यूम प्रोडक्ट तो ऐसा टर्न ओवर ओनली पॉइंट सेवन एंड ये सब ऐसा टर्न ओवर प्री डिसेंट फिम का थोड़ा बेटर है एंड लुमस का भी डिसेंट ऐसे वन पॉइंट फाइव वन पॉइंट थ्री एंड नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन अगर हम देखेंगे तो एस जी एस का ज्यादा है नाइनटीन परसेंट है तो उसके ऐसे और इक्विटी मल्टीप्लाई तीनों में कम ही तो लुमस में फिर भी थोड़ा सा डेट है बाकी कंपनी में बिल्कुल भी डेट नहीं है तो उसके से इनका रिजल्टिंग आर ओ सी सिमिलर ही निकलेगा आर ओ ई सिमिलर ही निकलेगा बट वन इज टू बी कि हमको क्या चीज ट्रैक करनी है सब जैसा मेरे को मालूम है अगर एस जी एस का मेजोरिटी मतलब रिटर्न मेरा एबिटा 
नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन से आ रहे हैं तो आई नो कि मेरे को प्राइमरली नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन स्टार्ट करना चाहिए ऑल्सो आई शुड लुक एट स्पोर्ट्स की एसेट टर्न ओवर कहीं से इंक्रीज हो जाए अब कह रहे थे कि अगर एक्सपोर्ट बाई चांस इंक्रीज हुआ तो एसेट टर्न ओवर में इंक्रीज आएगा या नहीं आएगा तो वी शुड लुक विथ दैट परसपेक्टिव तो कहा से हमारा बेसिकली हमारा आर या आर बढ़ सकता है तो दैट इज बाई दिस पॉइंट डिफ्रेंशियट बिटवीन थ्री कंपनीज जैसे इनका इक्विटी मल्टीपल था ज्यादा है इसलिए फीम का मार्जिन लूमेस्ट कंपेरिजन अभी करेंटली बेटर क्योंकि उनका लॉस मेकिंग जेबी से भी थोड़ा कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन आ रहा है उसके से उनका थोड़ा एबिटा या नेट प्रॉफिट मार्जिन थोड़े हमें डिप्रेस लगे गए साहब तो आगे जाके मालूम पड़ेगा उनका एक्चुअल में क्या मार्जिन आ रहे हैं क्या नहीं आ रहे तो बेसिकली हम देखेंगे तो तीनों के आर ओ सी पहले कवर कर चुके हैं अपवर्ड्स ऑफ फिफ्टीन परसेंट है एस जैसे केस में ट्वेंटी परसेंट जितना है तो डिफरेंट वेज में सेम रिटर्न जनरेट कर रहे हैं बिजनेस में तो ये अच्छा एक लर्निंग हो सकता है कैसे बिजनेस कर सकते हैं फिर वही रॉ मटेरियल कॉस्ट देखेंगे तो इनका रॉ मटेरियल कॉस्ट इज मच लेस इन केस ऑफ एस जैसे फीम एंड लिमेक्स से कंपेरेबल है बट फीम का थोड़ा सस्ता है ऐसा लुमेक्स से कंपेरिजन में लुमेक्सो था प्रमोटर फैमिली स्ट्रक्चर अब हमने बात करी थी कि एसजीएस में हमें थोड़ा कम सन मारे कि आगे सक्सेशन प्लानिंग हो के सकते हैं क्योंकि उनको भी जस्ट लिस्ट हुए अभी वो सोच रहे हमको बाहर जाके एक्सपांशन करना है जेबी करना है मर्जर करना है बट उनका भी ग्रुप का इन जनरल एस का सीओ क्या है अभी परमानेंट वही डिसाइडेड नहीं है तो आर द थिंकिंग क्या आगे हम ये सब इनऑर्गेनिक ग्रोथ करें कैसा तो वो थोड़ा कम सन मारते हैं मेरे को देन अगेन बाकी सब फैमिली रहने तो ऑब्वियसली इसमें होगा ही थोड़ा चेंज अब किसी में भी प्लेस नहीं तो दैट इज वन गुड थिंग and there is no significant litigation surrounding these players then a competitive advantage check karna hai to rsc humne abhi dekha last 5 years mein they have been despite auto cycle being in a major downturn they have been able to maintain rsc upwards of or greater than cost of capital so we do believe that aage bhi the trigger se ki they can maintain that and similarly rsc industry se better they have been able to maintain or growth bhi industry se zyada aa rahi hai so we do expect this to continue further and if a new competitor with deep pockets and ability to survive the income statement arrives matlab basically ye hai ki agar minda industries sabse bada player hai suppose usne kisi bhi entry mar diya ekdam cost cutting measure ya pricing bahut predatory tactics use kare to inke business affect hoge to our view is yes affect hoge bilkul hoge sjs mein bhi aaram se ho sakte hain film mein bhi ho sakte hain aur lumex mein bhi ho sakte hain kyunki film ki concept mein wo mention kara tha ki इनका जो ही मतलब होंडा का बिजनेस था इसमें इनका थोड़ा वॉलेट शेयर एक दो क्वार्टर में कुछ कम हुआ था क्योंकि किसी ने कुछ अंडर प्राइस कर दिया था और सेम एस लूमस में भी हो सकता है क्योंकि एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इनके उतनी प्राइसिंग पावर नहीं है ऑल द येस ये लोग आर एन डी सब सर्विस दे रहे हैं बट एक कोई बड़ा प्लेयर आ गया जैसे लूमिक्स इंडस्ट्री आ गया तो वो भी दे सकते सेम आर एन डी चीजें तो दे आर प्रोन टू डिस्टर्ब यार नॉट सेंग कि इनका इतना ज्यादा मोट है कि कोई डिस्टर्ब नहीं कर सकता इसमें बट कंसिडरिंग एटलीस्ट शॉर्ट टर्म व्यू ऑफ नेक्स्ट थ्री टू फाइव ईयर्स We don't th- think that that is a very major possibility. In in next three to five years, after that, it might happen because the 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 industry growth rate, like say in SGS, the market is not very big on the listed one one of the SGS enterprises, one of the biggest player in this uh, industry and उनका रिवेन्यू प्रोफाइल ही खाली पंद्रह सौ करोड़ है एंड तो आराम से कोई भी आके एंट्री मार सकता है मिंडा इंडस्ट्री चाहे तो हमारा ऐसा बिलीफ है मारेगा नहीं मारेगा वो बात की बात है बट We need to be cognizant of the fact that paint industry में देख रहे हैं ऐसा तो अब एक ये mental model भी आ गया कि कोई बड़ा प्यार आके disturb कर सकता है पूरी industry को तो okay मतलब उस चीज के cognizant रहने का बात है and theme और lumens में भी again कोई predatory pricing tactic इस तरह कर सकता है अंडर कट हमें ऐसा feel होता है <coughs> excuse me one second flash so again now i would like to give anti ji press in this slide yeah thank you dhruv mm-hmm. so as i I'll, i'll just echo what uh, avdut was saying a little while ago it was a marathon session and uh, really enjoyed listening to you i i'm generally on the on your side speaking most of the time so it was fun and very entertaining to listen to you and learn about auto sectors so uh, just 
before we end, uh, of course, uh, we found this uh, <coughs> these three companies interesting, and that is why we we have deep dived on it. But we just want to be uh, we just want to tell uh, all of you is that there are a few risks, few skeletons which we cannot ignore at this point of time. That is that is what we would like you all to understand as well. Okay, so I'll just share my screen. Okay, I hope you can see my screen, right? Great. So, if you uh, track the con calls of all the auto OEMs or uh, ancillaries over the last two, three quarters, what has been a clear cut uh, indication from all the players is that the the chip shortage problem is easing out. However, we came across this article which talks about uh, TSMC, the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, which is by far the world's biggest uh, chip manufacturer in the world and over here i'll i'll uh, share the link of the article as well uh, so that you can read the whole article here it has been mentioned very clearly that whatever easing out which which they see is predominantly because of subsidies and government related initiatives how much of that is sustainable and will continue that is something we don't know right so let's keep that in mind before uh, jumping on to uh, any kind of conclusion see investing in a particular business is a personal decision we all can take our own decision and we know the risk right but this is one risk which the consensus in the market if you talk to any any investor who is an auto who is tracking auto you will in general get the same view uh, both from the companies uh, the business uh, entrepreneurs and also from the investors community that okay the chip shortage problem is now slowly uh, getting erased however we would say that uh, don't take it blindly uh, wait for a few quarters to see whether this uh, thing is actually getting better or not because sometimes what happens is due to these artificial measure from the government things get stabilized for a certain period of time and then again it get uh, it goes southward so that is one area where we would say that please uh, be very very uh, particular and cautious so with this uh, we come to the end of the presentation thank you so much all of you it has been more than 3 hours i guess uh, and i'll just share the references so while preparing this presentation, Dhruv has studied all the annual reports of PM from FY11 to FY21, con calls and investor presentations of the last four years, all the con calls. And similarly for Lumex also, uh, last five to seven years, uh, annual reports and con calls. And that is why you can see the kind of deep dive he would be, uh, he was able to uh, do in today's presentation, right? And uh, since SGS is a new company, uh, get a whole DRIP and find out all the important points for today's presentation. Now, with this, I again thank you all of you. And just to remind you, uh, after this present, after this uh, presentation, we will quickly uh, stop this twenty percent discount uh, offer. A few of you have already availed it, so thank you so much for that. And uh, so it's 2.15 now. So we'll close this uh, discount offer at 2.30. Thank you once again, everyone. Uh, with this, uh, Ankit and Dhruv uh, and the whole team of Smartsing Services wish you a very happy Independence Day, happy weekend, and happy investing. Thank you. <laughs>